The opinions and views expressed in the following program are those of the speakers and the host and do not necessarily reflect those of Yokely Scott Corporation and your sports network. Yeah, I've been closer to Jesus before, so can you help me out? Can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Can you help me out? Welcome into a Thursday edition of Running Points presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Ron Pochesta with you alongside the royally cladded one, Mr. Anthony Hardwig, who had nightmares last night of Jose Ramirez. I did. He single-handedly beat the Royals. It's uh, That's a, hey. that's disturbing tip, if you're a Royals fan. Tip your hat to a good hitter and take the short series split and move on indeed all right and before we get into baseball and softball action which was really really good yesterday and promises to be incredibly good tonight with the canfield austin town fitch matchup in austin town at seven o'clock we got to uh, start the show off by congratulating and just absolutely uh, celebrating the youngstown state women's bowling team uh, first of all, they were invited into the NCAA tournament for the first time in the program's five-year history. Uh, this is a 16-team tournament. Youngstown State was brought in via a uh, at-large berth. They did not win the conference that they are in. No, it's not the Horizon Conference. I believe it's the SWAC uh, that they're bowling in, which is weird in and of itself, but I digress. Uh, however, this team was ranked number 10 so they were able to get one of the at-large berths. Nothing was, or not much, I should say, was expected from this team because, well, after all, they're an at-large team. Uh, two of the teams in their region are in the top five. Youngstown State happened to bowl against both of those teams and happened to wipe the entire lane up with all of the uh, of, of the programs. Uh, they beat number four, Louisiana Tech. They beat number five, Fairleigh Dickinson. They go to the NCAA uh, regional finals where all they need to do is win one match and they're in the final four, to which Anthony says... Hey, don't you think that's a fairly good day? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's a walk off. Three minutes into the show, you we're out of here. Out. Yeah, yep. that's uh, that's just a walk off right there. Uh, but no, I mean it, this is just an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal uh, job by the uh, by the women. They beat L- Louisiana Tech in the traditional format, and the traditional format is you have five bowlers, and uh, the traditional format is each of the five bowls uh, their game. And then you add up the the amount of pins uh, that was dropped in that game. Youngstown State defeated Louisiana Tech 966 to 918. So five bowlers combining for 966 pins. That's damn near an average of 200 per bowler. I'm just saying, that's pretty spectacular. Uh, They beat Louisiana Tech 974 to 945 in the Baker format. The Baker format is... The first bowler will bo- will bowl the first two lanes, uh, or the f- the the, uh, the first yeah the first two um, frames. The second bowler will bowl the third and fourth frame. The third bowler the fifth and sixth. The fourth bowler the seventh and the eighth. The last bowler who is supposed to be your best bowler will bowl the ninth frame as well as the tenth frame. Uh, Youngstown State defeated Louisiana Tech nine seventy four to nine forty five in the Baker's uh, edition. They won the series two games to nothing. They go on and they face Fairleigh Dickinson. Fairleigh Dickinson 
was beaten 1146 to 1080 in the traditional game. That's 1146 <laughs> divided by 5 is damn near 230 per bowler. That's ridiculously good. And then the uh, Lady Bowlers closed it out with a 1050 to 955 win over Baker. In the uh, in the uh, uh, Baker's match against Fairleigh Dickinson, two twenty nine point two is the av- is the uh, average score. I mean so. that's that's crazy good, right there. That that's crazy good because <laughs> normally kids are averaging in the low two hundreds. So all five of them put forth a ridiculous effort. Uh, Youngstown State's going to bowl today at four p.m. in another mega match against the winner of Fairleigh Dickinson. And Sam Houston. Uh, Sam Houston eliminated Louisiana Tech uh, yesterday. Fairleigh Dickinson is still alive. Uh, so each of those teams have one loss. So they will go through the process of uh, the uh, standard five person uh, game and then the Baker uh, games. Uh, and the, whoever wins that will take on Youngstown State. And they'd have to beat them twice. And they'd have to beat them twice. If the Penguins happen to lose the first match, They'll bowl again in a rematch in a best-of-seven Baker series to decide which team will advance to the Final Four. Youngstown State has a really, really good chance to be in the Final Four in women's bowling by the end of the day, which is crazy. Uh, Could you imagine any other sport um, where we're this close to being in the Final Four? I don't know if you knew this, but YSU is a bowling school. So well, uh, apparently I mean, they are now. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's uh, congratulations to the to the uh, to the women uh, women bowling team. Holy smokes, is this impressive? It's a striking win. Oh lord! <laughs> Another and, walk off for Anthony. Seven minutes in, and we couldn't help but spare the time. To talk oh about <laughs> wow. And to which the, some people tell me all the time, Ron, you got to get your mind out of the gutter and let's uh, continue on. Oh! With, let's continue on with uh, with the and show. We got to keep going because we're officially out of bowling puns. Uh, well, spare me let's the put a, spare me wait, the thought. Wait. I got one. Let's put a pin in this discussion. Ah, there we go. Oh! All right, and and at the end of the show, let's split. <laughs> okay, now we're officially done. <laughs> I'm kind of mad. I can't have you have the last last uh, word. Well, I, I, you're gonna stay call in me, your lane, bro. You're gonna call me out on strikes. <laughs> stay in your lane, bro. Okay, there we go. Uh, baseball. We made mention uh, Canfield is going to play Austin Town Fitch tonight uh, at seven o'clock. This is not going to be a league game. Rather, uh, this is turned out to be the championship game of a. Very uh, quick to be formed tournament uh, that was uh, that, that was. Uh, it's been a really good tournament, by the way. Yeah, and, um, and it was a it was a very quick tournament because of COVID nineteen uh, and the fact that Canfield wanted to leave the area but didn't because of COVID nineteen. So they started uh, they started to uh, come up with the idea they wanted to host a tournament. So they started calling teams from around northeastern Ohio. Uh, eight teams were in this. So New- it was Firestone, Newton Falls, Canfield, Austin Town, Fitch, Howland, Benedictine, Benedictine, yeah, yep, Illyria, oh, and Illyria Notre Dame and- Cathedral okay. Latin. Yep. Uh, they were divided into two two uh, two divisions of four teams each. Canfield uh, won their pool. They beat Newton Falls eleven to one. They beat Firestone seven to nothing. Last night they beat Howland two to nothing. Yeah, and Ryan Petro, by the way, threw a complete game three hit shutout of Howland. So mm. that's ah, it's impressive. <laughs> hey, I think Canfield's pretty good. Yeah, y- you think? Uh, Austin Town Fitch they beat uh, Benedictine six to nothing. Illyria seven to nothing. Notre Dame Cathedral Latin ten to two. Uh, so they won their division. Canfield won their division. Tonight, these two teams play for this tournament championship. What a treat! That means we o'clock. get this matchup three times this indeed. season. Indeed, three times. Three times. Yeah, indeed. Uh, so uh, Canfield and ha- Canfield and Fitch tonight at seven o'clock at Austin Town. 
So and think, this should be fun. You think if they split the, the league series that the winner of this game tonight will just be like, well, we're champions because we did beat you two out of three. Wow. It wasn't a league game, yeah. but let's just be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you could, you could conceivably um, say... Uh, say that uh, you never know. What a, the the uh, the we had two really good games yesterday. One DJ went over to Mohawk and got a, a great game as they went and beat number one in three A in, in the W P I A L right. That's yeah the Whippeal the Whippeal um, in Hopewell they beat them. Uh, so Hopewell Hopewell yeah Hopewell for those that don't know if you were to do uh, take fourteen another half a mile into Pennsylvania, and then go to Chippewa and pick up 376 going toward Pittsburgh. Hopewell is about 15 minutes away from Pittsburgh, uh, just off uh, I-376. Yeah, so Really good football program. So Mohawk beat them 2-1 to one in 10 innings. Outstanding. Number one team in, in Class 3A. Now, know your Whippeals. Do you know what Whippeal stands for? W P I A L. Sounds like a radio station. It does. Uh, Western Pennsylvania Inter Athletic League. Uh, the the state of Pennsylvania is very peculiar with their um, with their leagues. They don't have regular leagues. They have district leagues, and then uh, the western part of the state is under the umbrella of the Western Pennsylvania Inner Athletic League. Where does, or that, the line, where does that line get crossed? Uh, I, I believe Mercer County is where they say, no, no, we don't want to be a part of that. But Lawrence County, Beaver County, uh, or at least most of Lawrence County is under that umbrella. Uh, but it's um, the Whippeal uh, is a one of two or three umbrellas that the state of Pennsylvania has. The PIAA uh, it is in charge of the whole state. Whippeal's in charge of the uh, western part of the state. Pittsburgh, the suburbs to the north, south, east, and west. Uh, and then uh, the the rest of the, the league is, or the rest of the state, I should say, is um, uh, pretty much, you know, does what they want to do. But they don't have, they don't have leagues. They have districts where you... Um, your quote league is uh, a district. So uh, Greenville, for example, up in the northern part of Nurse, Mercer County, I believe, is in District Ten with Sharon and uh, Hermitage and Hickory and uh, all that other good stuff. So yeah, there, that's your little Pennsylvania history. Uh, but uh, yeah, it, uh, good to see that we're uh, we're in Western Pennsylvania, which is pretty cool. Uh, Ursula knocked off Poland yesterday, seven to three. So a, a good win for the uh, good win for the Irish. South Range was in um, Myrtle Beach. And they Myrtle Beach, the North Bullet. Yeah, uh, for their first loss of the season, uh, North Bullet beat them in eight innings, seven to five. They South Range actually had a f- uh, a um, five to four lead on. Uh, North Bullet going into the seventh inning, and those dang bullets scored a run in the top of the seventh, and then beat them in the top of the eighth inning. Yeah, and, and they beat Bullet Central yesterday, so they're going throughout the whole Bullet, whole Bullet range. Yeah, Bullet Central, North Bullet, South Bullet, West Bullet, all all kinds so, of bullets. Um, full Metal Jacket Bullet. Oh Lord. Uh, 32 caliber bullet. I don't know. <laughs> 357. 357 bullet. Yeah. You know, uh, South Range is bringing them all on. Yeah, that's uh, it. Uh, West Branch picks up another victory. Uh, they knock off St. Thomas Aquinas pretty convincingly. 16 to nothing. West Branch now 6 and 1 uh, on the campaign. Springfield gets a win over Lowellville. Uh, Western Reserve, a winner over Southeast. Uh, Columbiana buried Letonia yesterday in Letonia, 19-3. to They scored 14 runs in the second inning. Uh, Bears had uh, five errors in the ballgame. Uh, it just a... Uh, uh, Columbiana was able to, uh, to pick up the win. And Columbiana girls knocked off Letonia 23-1 to in the... Uh, in softball, they scored a run every single inning in the five-inning uh, Mercy Roll game. So uh, they get the victory uh, two well, times over Letonia in Letonia yesterday. We told you Columbia is a, is a tough team. To yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're good. 
Other softball scores, South Range uh, got another two wins in Myrtle Beach. They have their last day there today. So, uh, and then they get to come home and play Poland for, you know, the foothold of the NE8. Um, so they get two more. Um, Ursland beat Lisbon. This was a kind of a big matchup where both teams were coming in kind of hot. Lisbon with that uh, sweep over United in the EOAC. They were feeling high on themselves, but the Ursland bats just too much. 13-1 to over over Lisbon. Uh uh, Alyssa Sheely hit a three-run home run in the first inning. Just way too much. And then Springfield won a hit Lowville. Uh, 14 to nothing. The Tigers won that game to bounce back after splitting with Middle Ridge. Yeah, and, and back to the Ursland-Lisbon uh, game. Look, Lisbon's going to be a, a good team this year. And, yeah, this and, was a measuring stick. It, yeah. They went up a couple steps in the you, in the ladder. You... Uh... There is a there is a very yeah. steep hill from the EOAC to the Steel Valley Conference. And it was also remember it was their third game in three days, so it wasn't Absolutely. like they were playing Ursuline off of a fresh you know weekend. It was just uh, they just played two games against United, and now they had to come out and, and play Ursuline. And man, I, I Justice Rabel got things started with a leadoff home run in the first inning, and that's when I thought, oh, this could be a pretty competitive game, and then. Lisbon had an opportunity to score in that first inning. Urson pulled the double play, and it, that was pretty much the end of Lisbon's offense. Yeah. I mean, Lisbon did take a one nothing lead top of the right. first inning. Unfortunately, Ursuline scored five in the bottom of the first, tacked on four more in the bottom of the second. Before you knew it, it was 9-1. to one. Uh, So the, the game was starting to get out of hand. It was all the top half of the Ursuline lineup uh, through five innings. The Well, through the first four innings, I should say. Uh, one through six for Ursuline was 11 for 11 uh, at Oof. the plate. And then the bottom of the lineup only had one hit. So it was really the, the, their, their lineup one through six really, really tough. If you can get through it, the, the seven, eight, nine hitters are a little bit uh, easier to deal with. You know, they can still hit the ball. They can still hurt you. Anyone with a bat can hurt you. But their, their real strength comes through one through six. Yeah, that's... <laughs> When you go eleven for eleven in the top six of your lineup, <laughs> uh, forget it. That, that's uh, good luck. Good luck trying to uh, slow down that kind of an offensive right. production. That and that just you're asking for trouble. Yep. And uh, then uh, one home run, and then uh, Nutter barely missed a home run. Uh, so they they were really hitting the ball hard. We saw three balls get under the fence at that YSU softball complex for ground rule doubles. There must be like a gap. Between the fence and the and the ground out there, that's a little surprising. Because it was weird. Because I was like, okay, it happens once, it's flukish. It happened again, and I was like, you got to be kidding me! It rolled under the fence again. <laughs> yeah, that's that's. Um, I, I'm surprised by that. I, I wouldn't expect. And then the uh, I, I wouldn't expect a college uh, uh, outfield fence to have that kind of uh, situation going there. Later in the game, I mean, the YSU, the fence is pretty high for, for a softball fence. Yeah, ball bounced over it for a ground rule double. So we had three ground rule doubles in the game. Huh. First time I've seen that broadcasting, so. Well, there you go. Uh, ground rule doubles aren't as, aren't as common in softball as they are, you know. Either, they're really not that common in baseball either. You know, they don't happen too, too often. No, but ball the, bouncing over the fence. The old adage of um, a baseball will find its way through a through that whatever deficiency the ballpark has. <laughs> well, that that that's uh, that that would certainly describe what uh, what you saw yesterday uh, with a softball going through the fence or underneath the fence three different times. So I, I'm just surprised that that. Um, that stadium would have uh, that kind of a uh, setup because right. normally, you know, college uh, college uh, baseball stadiums and softball stadiums they don't they don't have any um, uh, you know they don't have any holes or anything like that. So I'm a little I don't know surprised what's going by on that. Now. I don't know if there's like one little gap in the wall that the ball is found twice with bad luck, or or if there's a big and I, I don't I've never I've never kind of gone out and, and inspected the outfield wall. So I just know that two balls went under and one ball bounced over. Interesting. Hey, three weeks from today is the 2021 National Football League draft. The draft this year is going to be held in Cleveland. 
Uh, it, uh, it's going to be in ver various places. First Energy Stadium, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame next door to First Energy Stadium. Uh, apparently there's going to be uh, some other stuff happening along Lake Erie. Uh, so uh, this, this should be pretty fun. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll see what transpires three weeks from tonight uh, with our favorite teams. And the Indians are playing on the same night as the draft, too. So if, you're going, if you're going to the Tribe game, good luck. <laughs> well, thankfully, the Indians are a couple of miles away from right. the, the whole action. But it's still going to be, uh, uh, I would imagine, harder to get in and out of that city than normal. I would imagine that there will be more people in – <laughs> in in the uh, in the draft or at the draft, then there will be, and it won't even be close. Uh, then there will be at the baseball game. Their home opener had like five thousand people there, which and they're just, allowed eight, right? They're eight allowed there. eleven. Eleven. Yeah, they're so allowed they eleven. They, it was the, the home opener was allowed. The home pass. opener was over eight thousand. Yesterday was nowhere close to that. Now, to to be fair, it was a four a two o'clock one o'clock game. And the opener was a 4 o'clock game. You're not going to see big crowds for a week game that's playing at 4 and 1 o'clock. Well, you would think the home opener, you would want to sell that out. Normally, they do sell it out, but um, not this week. That's, uh, that's again, for sure. It was Monday at 4 o'clock. People, you know, that's not a big time to go to Yeah, a but baseball. they sell out opening day all the time. And, and it's only 11,000 tickets. I mean, it's... Right. You know, there, there's no excuse here. That's the fact that you couldn't put eleven thousand people in your stadium. Uh, that's just, you know, the Indians fans are pissed. They're they're pissed at the owner because they traded away Lindor. They're pissed at the owner because he's allegedly cheap. Uh, which again, uh, know your history. Uh, the, Eighty percent of this roster doesn't have the. Um, it doesn't have enough service time to call their shot on how much money they make. Well, so I the would, Indians are simply saying, hey, we'll pay you whatever we want to pay I would you. tell those people you're not a true fan of your team if you're just going to, I'm not going to go because I don't like this trade or I don't like the, the way that the GM is spending. Like, maybe I'm, like, out of my mind, but my idea when I'm a fan of a team, I'm supporting the players and the coaches, which really have no control over the decisions that the front office makes. The Royals could never make a trade or a you know, lack of spending that would say, I'm going to stop going to Royal. I'm going to stop rooting for the Royals. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I don't understand how that works in your mind. They, they traded Francisco Lindor, so I'm going to stop supporting the team. It's just, I don't get it. But... Well, I don't. Everyone I don't kind of functions and, differently. And and we talked about this. Uh, I think it was Monday. We talked about this. The whole boycotting thing. It's, and I'm going to sound a little hypocritical because in the off season I was gung ho about you were possibly. You were all talk. You were both I, I was talking about boycotting bit. because I, I was a little pissed off at how Major League Baseball did their thing with minor league baseball. Now, you obviously want to wait and see what their plan is or the finished product or whatever. But the more I've thought about this, and, and this will go into the, the whole argument with the All-Star game, I don't understand the whole part of boycotting. First of all, if you're boycotting Major League Baseball because of the All-Star game or because of the, uh, uh, for the Indians trading away Lindor or whatever reason, you're essentially punishing people that may or may not lose their job, depending on how many of you decide to boycott this. And you're punishing the very people that really didn't have that decision to make. Who you're trying to punish are folks that you'll already never, have honestly, money. And you'll never touch. Like, Manfred doesn't care if you boycott baseball. Yeah, he's sitting pretty. He's he's the commissioner, so it's you know. I mean, it, you know. Um, uh, it, it, the other part of this is, um, oh, Coca Cola is of this. Let's let's boycott Coca Cola. Really, you could never get a boycott big enough to affect Coca Cola. Well, first, sorry about your luck. First of all, um, if you're to boycott Coca Cola, boycott it because it's terrible for you. 
uh, it, with all the sugar and whatnot. But uh, but neither but forget about that for a second. And then you have to really. <laughs> it's the best tasting soda. Why the hell would you boycott the best tasting soda? It's like people sitting well, back and saying, "I don't like I don't like Starbucks. I'm going to boycott Starbucks." I think Pepsi is better than. No, Coke. get out of here. Okay, but. <laughs> <laughs> but then you have to dive into everything that Coca Cola owns too. Dive into the research, and I think you'll be, you'll be surprised at some things they own that you probably didn't even know that Coca Cola made. And you'll be like, I don't want to stop drinking this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> Coca Cola, they have a lot more than just their little pop brand. Right? Exactly. Now, on the flip side, on the flip side of this is the other side of the argument of, and I'll throw out my, Rob Manfred under the bus because I love doing this. <laughs> Rob Manfred happens to be a member. Of Augusta National. Augusta National is in Georgia. Rob Manfred took the All Star Game out of Georgia because of the of the law that was enacted in Georgia. Well, if you don't like the law enacted in Georgia, when do we expect you to drop your membership from Augusta, which happens to be in the state of Georgia? I mean, if you're going to be true to your word, then let me see you have nothing to do. With the state of Georgia. Otherwise, you're a damn hypocrite. Well, as long as he's not going into the Masters, he can keep his membership and say, you know, whatever, until that's going, I'm not going to go to Augusta. Well, I think he has a little bit too much work to do as the commissioner of baseball right. to be going to Augusta. So then, then my, my, why, are you a, uh, why are you a member of Augusta if you can't even go to Augusta? <laughs> well, that's true, too. I mean, that's, uh, I mean that's, that's like having a gym membership and being like, you know what? Yeah, I, I, think that's, I think that's, a, uh, that's a, the kind of a status thing. It's like having a gym membership when you have your own home weight set. <laughs> yeah. But just to say I have a membership to the YMC or whatever or to Planet Fitness. Or hey, whatever. guess who's leading the Masters right now early on? Patrick Reed? No, the guy that we, uh, or the guy that you and I talked about before the show about um, whether or not he would have a shot at at winning this. Uh, Matsuyama is three under par after eight holes. Uh, Patrick Reed is one under through four. He is in a tie for sixth place. Uh, Patrick Reed is the guy that Brian Tolnar picked. uh, Justin Thomas hasn't teed off yet, has he? Uh, No, Justin Thomas, I don't believe... I don't believe he has teed off yet. Let me uh, let me look down this list here real quick. Now we're getting into the really ugly part. All right, no, he is he is not teed off yet. Justin Thomas tees off uh, at one forty eight this afternoon. He'll be teeing. Uh, he'll be playing with uh, Finau and uh, um, and Louis Oosthuizen. Oosthuizen. Yeah, Oosthuizen. Uh, so uh, Justin Spieth tees off at uh, 2 o'clock. He'll be the last one. He and Morikawa and uh, Smith will be uh, teeing off. Uh, I believe Jason Kokrak uh, is on the first hole right now as we speak. So we'll see what uh, what Jason does in his uh, second go-around in the Masters. You know, it's a Thursday, and that means that we have softball coaches to talk to a little Indeed. bit later in the show. At 2 o'clock, we're going to have Michelle Titus from McDonald's Softball. Can't wait to talk to her about some of her players, especially Bree Callow, who already has a perfect game under her belt this year. And then also, on top of her perfect game, a 15 strikeout performance in five innings against Gerard. So that, that's two, impressive. Two pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, outings for her already yeah. this year. And then at 2:20, we'll talk to Dave Crisman of of Lisbon Softball, who we talked about a little bit against Herslin. Yeah, you strike out the side five innings in a row. Uh, now, you might have given up a, yeah, a hit two, uh, or a one, couple of base runners. One hit and two walks, 15 yeah. strikeouts. All right, but but striking out the side five innings in a row, 15 strikeouts. You have my attention. You 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 certainly have my attention. That's, um, oof. man, that's good. That's, are, that's solid. Except that, uh, unless you're a player on the defense, you're sitting there like, let's go. Let me play. <laughs> if anything, it's going to test your patience. Right. You're sitting there like, why am I even going to get ready for this one? I know she's going to strike her out. Yeah, but you can't do that. <laughs> I know. You can't do that because otherwise the ball's going to go <laughs> right by your ear. And then, uh, hey, why didn't you catch that? Well, I, oh, why didn't you strike I, her out? <laughs> I just thought you'd strike her out. I mean, you're slacking off here. I mean, uh, what the hell? All right, 330 3 It's how they got their one hit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, wait a second. That was a routine ground ball. Well, I thought you'd strike her out. 
Uh, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. We'll take a time out. It's a Thursday edition of Running Points presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Back in a bit. New things happen all day. Some are good, some not so good. In today's complicated world, while you're busy working, playing, and living life, we're busy helping you make sense of the day's news. And there's only one place where it comes together with clarity, context, and accountability. It's 21 News at 6 with me, Madison Tromler, and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 6. It's what the day's news really means to you. Welcome home to a home made homier with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring, and, well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily, delivered conveniently, enjoyed comfortably. BairdBrothers.com. WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists, located on South Avenue in Boardman. Hi, this is Jim Myers with Myers Family Insurance, your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now is the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's, Let's win, win together. together. Call K-Squared Marketing at 330-623-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. Chevrolet. Hubbard can help you get the financing you need regardless of your situation. I'm Tony Pache and I've helped thousands of customers in Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania buy a vehicle. Bad credit? No credit? No problem. I can get you approved for a low interest loan and maybe even a low payment lease on a new car at the number one Chevy dealership in Trumbull County for three years in a row. Visit HubbardChevy.com to get pre-approved or come see me, Tony Pache, to get a new vehicle today. Remember folks, Hubbard can help. Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. The 4M company, being an architect and construction manager for over 40 years, has had the opportunity to use many different electrical businesses for our projects. The depth, quality, and knowledge and attention to detail displayed by Dickey Electric makes them stand out above all the rest. For state-of-the-art expertise and a timeless commitment to our customers, contact Joe Dickey Electric. We are everything electrical. When looking for home design inspiration, don't just be inspired, be Baird inspired. Whether new or remodeling, Baird Brothers has the latest trends like shiplap to refresh your home. Go from inspiration to installation with our wide selection of in-stock American hardwoods. From the rustic charm of antique oak to the warmth of traditional cherry, Baird Brothers has what you need to make your home inspiring. Baird Brothers, our family's heritage, your family's home. Welcome back to a Thursday edition of Running Point on YSNlive.com. I had to think about that for a second. 
It's a Thursday edition. Th- Thursday. 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 Thursday edition. Yeah, Thursday April, edition. It's April 8th, 2021. It is uh, the anniversary of the late Henry Aaron passing Babe Ruth to become the all-time home run king. Uh, it was on a Monday night, and the game was televised nationally on NBC. And I remember this. It was in 1974. I remember this because I was in, uh, oh, God, uh, fourth grade. When, uh, when he did this. So, yeah, it was on Monday Night Baseball on NBC. He's trying to imagine Rob Batesta as a fourth grader. It, it, was, uh, it, it was kind of similar to what you would imagine me being as a kid. Uh, just me right now as a kid without the curse words. And that's basically what uh, what you get <laughs> without the curse words, because uh, you know we don't we we would we didn't do that kind of stuff. But I re- so who corrupted you then, Rod? <laughs> I don't know. I, I, so many people, so many people. So many. Yeah, I distinctly remember having this conversation with my parents. Uh, I get home from school, and my dad worked twelve hours a day. He had a drugstore at a pharmacy in in Washingtonville, and and he came home. Uh, for dinner uh, and then would go back and finish up over in the pharmacy. So he was home for dinner and we were, you know, my, my older brothers, younger sister and I, my grandmother and my, my mom and dad were at the dinner table. And my dad asked me how school was today and I said, no, it was all right. And we were making conversation and, and I was kind of, kind of, uh, proud of myself or not really proud of myself but kind of uh uh saying a matter of factly in the future ron potesta journalist type of attitude i said well i have good news and bad news and my dad kind of like looked at me and he goes well what's the what's the good news and my version of the good news was that i improved my grade in a test from a god awful grade uh, to a less god awful grade, and my dad kind of like looked at me and said, "You're an idiot." Uh, but he said, "Well, what's the bad news?" I said, "Well, there's a chance that that it might rain tonight in Atlanta, and Henry Aaron won't get a chance to break Babe Ruth's record on national TV." And my dad's like, "You're really putting this above your grades?" I'm like, "Yeah, it's baseball." <laughs> Welcome to my world. Yeah, it's baseball. <laughs> it's baseball. Welcome to my world. Baseball? Great. Yeah, baseball's up here. Grades is somewhere way, way, way down somewhere. Come on. Uh, like, hey, what fourth grader is stressing about grades anyway? Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, now, looking back on this. Do your multiplication tables. Uh, looking back on this, wink, wink, wink. I would have never said anything like that looking back on this now. Uh <laughs> yeah, no. Uh but yeah, it was uh do the do the arithmetic Ron. Forty seven Carry the four. Forty seven years ago tonight. There you go. Yeah. Forty seven years ago tonight, Henry Aaron broke uh, uh Babe Ruth's record for most home runs in a uh, career. Hit seven fifteen. And you watched it. I watched it. He got walked the first time. Uh the Atlanta crowd was getting a little uh a little rambunctious. Second time up, first pitch was uh, was way out of the strike zone, and the crowd was getting all over Al Downing. Uh, the one zero pitch was grooved right down the middle. Aaron hit it over the left center field fence, and uh, the party began. You think at that point the pit like no one wants to be the guy that gives up that home run, but then again it's like man I am sick of getting booed. Here's a cookie, just hit it. Yeah. It's, no one's on base. Whatever. Here, here's a curveball that didn't curve. A cookie right down the middle, waist high, just here's, like you like it. Here's a little batting practice. Here you go. Yeah. Here it comes. <laughs> yeah, right. there it is. The record. Did they, now, did the Braves win the game? I don't even know if they did or not. <laughs> I. I uh, uh, <laughs> Who cares? The, exactly. I mean, it was. Uh, I remember the action being stopped for like 10 or 15 minutes uh, because his mom and dad. Uh, had to be taken to the field. And back then, 
you're putting me on the field. That's my baby. Well, th- th- here's the thing. Um, Henry Aaron was threatened with his life right. uh, on a number of occasions in the days leading up to this. Uh, so his mom was really petrified that someone was going to actually go through with this before hitting the 715th home run. Uh, so when she ran out onto the field, uh, she gave uh, her son a bear hug. Uh, and, and Henry Aaron had, had said, uh, you know, he, he, was, he felt like he was in a death grip. Uh, she, was, she, was, she was squeezing him so hard. But, um, yeah, I remember the game being, uh, being held up for about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, two teenagers ran onto the field right, right uh, as he was rounding second base, and uh, and the cops and were ran, ran the base with him. Yeah, the cops were this close to going full bore and beating the crap out of him with billy clubs and whatnot. But then I guess they realized they weren't armed or anything like that, so they let it go. They let, they let a lot a lot of stuff go back <laughs> in the day. They, there used to be celebrations where fans would storm the field. I wish and, you could do that now. Just, I'm going to go run the bases with this guy. That's cool, right? I'm not armed. Yeah. Very good. Okay. It, yeah. Here we it, go. Let's it, go. There was a <laughs> lot of stuff that happened back in the back in the day where you were you were encouraged to go on the field and celebrate with the players after they won a World Series, right? Uh, or in in big moments. Now, in this one, it, the the only two people that came out were the I think they were arrested, but arrested. Uh, and uh, I guess they probably didn't yeah. see the rest of the uh, game. Not not too many things are worth getting arrested, but but that that might be one of them. Because you know they're on they're on the, you know you can't watch that highlight now without seeing them. Oh, exactly. They're immortalized. Yeah, they're they're and, they're uh, definitely immortalized. And you know you spend what a night in jail or whatever, if they even spend any that. time in jail. Yeah, if that. There's three different totally versions. Totally worth it. Sorry. I know that's a bad, you know, bad influence. Well, totally no, I, I agree with you. Uh, there's three different calls to the game. Um, the Dodgers announcer uh, Vin Scully uh, was on the on the call for the Dodgers. Milo Hamilton uh, was the Braves announcer, and he was on the call for the Braves. And Kurt Gowdy was the NBC broadcaster. So yeah, three different calls of the home run, and um, all three of them have been. Uh, you can hear all three of them. Uh, him, Milo goes bananas uh, talking through all of it. Uh, Vince Scully, the the class that he was, he he's bringing up the fact that uh, what a marvelous scene. Uh, here's a black man being cheered in the Deep South for uh, breaking a home run record that was uh, held for a long, long time. And and then Kurt Gowdy was basically the same thing, except he uh, he just let the crowd. Uh, dictate the uh, the dictate the call, which I think is really cool. Whenever announcer, whenever a broadcaster does that, he you know a big big moment where the crowd's just going absolutely bonkers. Let it breathe. You don't need to say anything. Let it breathe. Let it breathe. Just let it breathe. So uh, it, it was cool. Uh, but yeah, you know, forty seven years ago tonight, uh, in Casa de Potesta in uh, in, in Letonia, in front of a. In front of a TV, I, uh, I celebrated with uh, with everyone that watched that. Another thing that Jim Nance is dang good at in letting things breathe. He oh, watched yeah. that national championship. He made the call at the buzzer, and then for a good 15 to 20 seconds, he didn't say a thing. You don't need he to. he just let the cameras do their work and show the celebration. Exactly. And that's where that's where the, the great ones are. It, they they understand the now, moment. If you're a radio instead of TV, you do need a, a little bit more. You can't let it go for 20 seconds because there's no shots of celebration to fill what you're seeing. So sure, you have to describe some stuff. But if you're a TV, you have you uh, you have video. There, there should be at least 20 seconds of just. And if you're the color commentator, that situation do not step on your play by play. Yeah, you're not doing you anything s- like you that. You sit back and you just. You sit back and admire the work of your uh, of your partner, and you uh, admire the the moment, and you don't say anything until the yeah. play by play guy looks at you and so says, you "Let's talk replay. about it." So you show the replays, then yeah. you start to break down the replays. Yeah, exactly. It's you know a lot of folks they bagged on uh, on Milo for talking through all of that, and well, to which okay, but he was on the radio. He was on the radio. So yeah. if you don't, all you hear is just. 
Yeah, all you're hearing is the crowd, the, noise. Is the crowd noise, which you can't you, you can't let that go on for a long period I've, of time. But. I've been spoiled with with TV because we were we were listening to the Royals game between commercial breaks last night, and I remember the Royals hit a ball hard to left field and it hooked a little bit foul. But with TV, you probably know right away that's a foul ball. Sure. With radio, you gotta wait a little bit. Yeah. So they, you hear ball hit hard to left, it's going, and then. Oh, it looks foul. Yeah, you know, like, ah. you saw my reaction. I was not happy. It's like, don't. No, come on. <laughs> I love the the radio announcers that say the ball gets hit hard, and then you watch the replay, and it got caught like ten feet in front of the warning track. Well, it could have been hit hard. I mean, I, it's a pop fly. It's like you watch the replay, and you go, "His call was way too excited for that hit." Well, <laughs> look, I mean, it depends. I mean, if the wind is blowing in and the ball gets held up in the breeze, then you know this ball is crushed. And then you watch the replay. He's like, <laughs> it's "All right." I mean, uh, sometimes the ball is crushed and the wind holds it up. I, you know, I remember. God, this is horrible. I remember um, in Texas, this would, I, I believe this was my first year doing, first or second year. Um, and in Texas, there were, the, we had a violent windstorm where the wind was blowing in at least 30 miles an hour. And I should have known better. Any fly ball was not going to be crushed. It was essentially going to be brought back into the infield. <laughs> but this kid hit, I mean, he hit this ball on the screws. I mean, he really hit it on the screw. So I thought, okay, this one's got a chance. Right to the shortstop in the back of the infield. No. And my buddy looks over at me and he goes, yeah, he hit the hell out of that one, Ron. <laughs> and the, wind was, uh, the, the wind was playing tricks. It is what it is. Well, last night, remember I said the ball got under the fence? Yeah. The first, the, the first one I called, it looked like the ball went over the fence. Because it just it went and then it disappeared. I couldn't see it anymore. Yeah, so I was exactly. Like, That's got to be a home run, right? Yeah. Nope. Ground rule double. I go well. Sorry, folks. It wasn't a home run. That, uh, oops. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah. Whoops. A couple of years ago, um, when I was on terrestrial radio, I um, I had Tom Hamilton on. One of Tom Hamilton's great. Uh, one of the reasons why he's such a great baseball broadcaster is his home run calls. Right. I mean, his home run calls are just stuff of made of legends. So I asked him, I said, have you ever been caught where you're going into your home run call and it turns out the ball doesn't leave yeah. the yard? It winds up getting caught. He goes, not in the major leagues I haven't. He goes, "That's um, I make sure that... There's no way that ball's not leaving the yard, uh, and and I, you know, said, well, that's why you're in the major leagues. <laughs> I am a talk show host <laughs> interviewing you right now. We both got a chuckle out of it, but it's, I mean, it's it's true. I mean, if you better you better be damn sure that that ball is going to be leaving the yard if you're going to go into a uh, celebratory home run call. You really better be sure that ball leaves the yard. Otherwise, uh, that's not going to be a I'll good tell you, look. The the home run at West Branch on Monday night, I was sure. <laughs> <laughs> this ball went off the scoreboard. I was sure it was leaving the yard. There you go. There you go. Wow. That's uh, that, that. It's Broadcasting games on the radio is fun. And broadcasting runs, games in general is those fun. Those home runs that make the sound that you just know. Oh, balls, Absolutely. Yeah. Those are the best. I mean, like the ball that flies off the bat and it makes that sound. Even in, in softball when it's a metal bat, that sound is just like, oh. And you, you know. can't, you you know. can't <laughs> have a, um, a long celebratory call like you can in baseball because in baseball no. the ball's got a clear uh, right. a minimum 300-foot fence. I mean, you're going you're gonna to have a little bit of fun with that. Softball, you're cutting that by about 100 feet. Right. So. Right. It's my it's call is quick. Usually, my call is usually done by the time the player's rounding second base. Okay. Yeah, it's 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 got to so. be pretty quick. One would assume because right. you know you, you can't sit back and go swinging a drive to deep left field going back is it a track wall it's gone no it's basically swinging a drive goodbye goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> 
can't describe it any further because the ball's just steaming out at a pretty good clip. Uh, so it, uh, it it doesn't make for good home run calls per se. You but can. You just have to adjust. Yeah. You have, you have to be a little bit quicker right. uh, with, the, with the call. But, yeah, there is nothing better than doing baseball. Uh, whether it be on the radio, on on uh, on this platform, there's nothing better. I love doing baseball games. That's uh, that, that's just that's that's my idea of fun. So we'll do a lot of them beginning in uh, late May when the scrappers are in uh, are in in uh, uh, here, back here, in the here, fold. Here comes Ronnie's jittery again. He's getting he's getting excited. Back in the fold, May the twenty sixth. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, Monday through Saturday, seven oh five will be uh, will be the games. And then uh, Sunday at four oh five. So uh, that's the uh, that will be the uh, the schedule for the home games. Sunday fun day. Uh, Sunday fun day indeed. All right, three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. We made mention um, Fitch and Canfield will be playing each other for the first time. Uh, of what is going to be three games this year between the two teams. And uh, we have a third game because this uh, very um, hastily uh, put-together tournament is going to have their championship game tonight. And sure enough, Canfield and Austin Town Fitch are going to be playing each other. Uh, Canfield got to the championship game by uh, knocking off Newton Falls, Akron, Firestone, and Howland yesterday. Uh, uh, Firestone two days ago, Newton Falls three days ago. Uh, Fitch won its poll by beating uh, Benedictine on Monday, Illyria on Tuesday, Notre Dame Cathedral Latin yesterday. So Canfield and Fitch, both undefeated, they will be playing each other tonight at Fitch High School at 7 o'clock in the championship of the eight-team two-pool uh, tournament that was so, quickly put together. This is how good Ryan Petro was on the hill last night for Canfield. Seven innings pitched, uh, three hits, no runs, no earned runs, of course, one walk, seven strikeouts. Does all that with 81 pitches in seven innings. And yeah, that's pretty good. That's an average of a little over like, 11 pitches an inning. Yeah, plus, I mean, that's, seven, that is seven, very good. Seven, usually if you have a high strikeout count, you're going to have a high pitch rate just because it takes a little bit longer to strike someone out. But seven strikeouts, even if he did all of them in three pitches, that's 21 pitches he eaten up right there. It's not, and I doubt he had all of his strikeouts in three pitches. No, because you don't no. see that too you, often. Yeah, it's. I would imagine so, uh, he 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 probably didn't even get half of those. You got to think at least thirty of his pitches are used up by his seven strikeouts. So then he gets what? Uh, he gets fourteen more in fifty-one pitches. Fourteen more outs. That, that's it. That's an efficient start. Yeah, uh, it the, absolutely the is. It, it is absolutely an efficient start. And, and we talked with um, uh, with Coach Niddle um, a few weeks ago. And, I mean, this team is not only stacked offensively, uh, they have more than enough pitching to make a really, really deep run. Uh, if if they stay healthy, they could make a really deep run in Division Two. Yeah, because they got they got kids that can come in for an inning or two to to finish the game. That's going to be big in the tournament because you're going to have to save arms a little bit. So if someone you know has maybe seventy pitches through five, and you want someone else to come in and throw the last two to save him those pitches, Canfield's a team that has the depth on the arms to do that easily and without without question. Well, Ryan Petro is their third starter, right? I mean, that, which means they won't need him to start in the tournament. Yeah, I, so I mean the, the can, two guys that are going to start the um, the ace of the team, uh, uh, Beidl, sure. uh, Beetle She's. Right. I, I think I've butchered the hell out of his name, uh, and I apologize. Uh, and Nate Shaw is and the number Shaw. two starter. Right. So uh, you know, I mean, both of them are going to be um, are going to be going. Uh, uh, I think. Um, Landon, how do you pronounce his, his last name? Beidelshees? Beidelshees? I'd have to ask someone that 
I, I, well, I haven't done the a Canfield game yet. He's he's committed to uh, to West Point. And he's just a junior, but he's committed to West Point. And Nate Shaw's a junior as well. And he's committed to Wright State, which, boy, what a feather in the cap that is for Wright State coming into our area to take a potential penguin uh, out of the uh, out of the fold and putting him into uh, Wright State, which happens to be in the same conference as Youngstown State. That's right. That's that's some that's serious right. recruiting by that's, Wright State. Thank you very much. That's, that's like Michigan coming into Columbus and taking some talent away from Ohio State right there. Yeah, that's um, that's, and that's not uh, the first time Wright State has done that uh, uh, with a with a Valley kid. I remember Mark Hughes, who played basketball at Ursuline. Uh, he was he was uh, chosen to go to Wright State to play basketball for Wright State. So that, I mean, that's that's a uh, that's a big time win. That's and ballsy to go people, uh, to go into the uh, to our area. Don't hear that and automatically assume well, why is you missed the ball and, and they're terrible and then how can they miss that? Sometimes just if a kid's gonna fit into the what you want to build, if his pitch repertoire matches what you're trying to, there are a lot of things that go into whether or not you go after a kid. That's more than just and Ron can attest to this. It's more than just. Okay, he's talented enough. He's got to fit your your roster too. So there there are definitely more reasons than just why is you missed a ball on this that, well, that they didn't go listen, after Nate. Shaw. Not only that, I mean, I don't know this to be a fact, but maybe Nate Shaw wanted to leave the area right. and wanted to wanted to be on his own. Right. Uh, and and that is another scenario that uh, that could have uh, could have been the case. And Wright State's in Dayton, so it's it's far enough to have that experience where you're away from home, but not so far where if you know you needed to get home for one reason or another, you know, it's just a four hour drive. So it's not like uh, you'd have to find your way home from across the country. Yeah, it's not so like it's, you're going to be commuting it's, back it's the, and forth for classes. It's the perfect kind of middle ground if if you want to travel somewhere. Absolutely, and and uh, kudos to Wright State for coming into the Mahoning Valley and and recruiting uh, some of our kids. I mean that look, I and what have we said at YSN? It really doesn't matter where the kids go to uh, go to college. I mean, obviously, as a YSU fan, I would love for all of the baseball talent to stay here <laughs> and go to school at Youngstown State. But uh, again, you. you you can't dictate whether a kid is interested in staying home to go to college or or going out on his own. And, and for all we know, Nate Shaw might be one of those kids that wanted to leave the area and get uh, the college experience of living in a dorm. Well, Loyal is a pillar of YSN, and, and no matter where Nate Shaw goes, whether it would have been Youngstown State, it's obviously Wright State, uh, we're going to root for him. Absolutely. And, and we're going to stay updated with what he's doing, and we're going to support him. We're just maybe not not root for him hard when he plays the pick. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit back and say, "Hey, Nate, uh, pitch a good game." Not against us. Mm-hmm. Pitch a good game and just have someone else pitch a little bit better than you. Exactly. You know? Exactly. One nothing game. Both both pitchers pitch pretty well. That, that's fine. Yeah, one nothing, two one, three two. That's that's yeah. fine. I mean, that's uh, but you know when they play Youngstown State. I hope you pitch well, but not too well. Not too well. Yeah, not too well. Not too well, kid. 330-886-0813, the MPV Vo heating and air conditioning hotline open for business. Stop if you've heard this. Tyler Naquin, homers again yesterday. Uh, He's on a tear. Woof. And he's got Indians fans up in a hizzy. Yeah, the the Indians fans are uh, as if there's more reasons to... uh, you know, pick your fight against uh, the Indians and the management and whatnot. Uh, Tyler Naquin now has four home runs, 12 RBI, and everyone's losing their mind saying, oh, he would have fit in the outfield. Okay, again, we're, what, five games into the season. Let's relax a little bit. It's, uh, everything is going to be, everything is going to be okay. Just relax. It's fine. Frankie says relax. Fine. Everything's going to be fine. Just relax. Um, you know, but it, it is pretty cool to see Naquin uh, do his thing. But, you know, like I said yesterday, he's 29 years of age. Light bulb didn't come on for the most part. So, you know, the Indians wanted to go in another direction. They got kids that uh, that they think will will do their job. Now, I'm not so convinced. 
convinced that uh, Zimmer is going to be one of those guys. I'm not even convinced anymore that Mercado uh, is going to be one of those guys, although Mercado probably uh, uh, he has a better chance right now. I've, I've officially given up on Zimmer. I, I don't think Zimmer is going to be the answer. That's just, he's 28, the light bulb isn't on. That's not going to get turned on. Uh, Mercado and Daniel Johnson have a better chance of, of um, getting it done uh, for the Indians long term. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Thank God for Jose Ramirez yesterday, though. And, it, and someone mentioned this on the show uh, or on the broadcast. How many teams are going to legitimately pitch to Jose Ramirez knowing that he single-handedly beat the Royals yesterday? That, that second home run, the pitch was so bad. Such a bad pitch. Yeah. But, I, I on mean... On a 3-2 count, too, with two outs and runner on first, I'm just like, don't give in to the guy. I mean, if you walk him, you walk him, and you go to the next hitter who you... The Royals have been handling the lineup for the most part. So I'm thinking 3-2, you know, give him something a little bit around the strike zone. Maybe he'll chase because he wants to be aggressive. But, man, middle, middle, hang. <laughs> yeah, I just... Um, oh, it was such a bad pitch. I, I, I'm just wondering... Uh, especially the way the uh, the way the team other than Ramirez uh, is swinging the bats, I- I'm just wondering if there's going to be a time where people are going to be like, yeah, you know what, we're not pitching to him. Let's let's right. let someone else on this team beat you or, or beat us, and we'll go from there. The guy that I was um, quietly impressed with. Um, and I was mad as hell with him last year because of his stupidity. But Emmanuel Classe. Yeah. He of the uh, PEDs for horses. Uh, he, um, he threw nine fastballs. And eight of them were over 100 miles an hour. Uh, this guy's got a live arm. That's... Well, duh, he's that, taking a horse. Uh, that that's just he's taking a horse amphetamine. That, that's just crazy how good this guy's uh, how good this guy's velocity Cheater. is. Cheater. Well, I mean, look, I mean, he's not he's not cheating right now that we know of. Well, I mean, he I'm wouldn't. sure that he's <laughs> getting tested a million and one times because you know he is a he former has, cheater. He has another horse, you know, uses urine tests, so he's fine. <laughs> he has secretary over there that's. Uh, Give it to that horse over here. And let me get the good stuff. Uh, Hang on. Look, eight pitches over 100 miles an hour. He throws the same pitch that Rivera pitched, um, the cutter, the cut fastball, which if you're right-handed, the cut fastball is supposed to go. It's pretty. I mean, like, guys, it's a slider that doesn't slide as much, and it's a little bit harder is what it is. Yeah, it's supposed to go into a left-handed batter. Away from a right-handed batter. Yeah, I had to, I had to think about this one because I'm not right-handed. I'm, I'm left-handed. Yeah, so he, he throws a pitch that goes away from the right-handed batter into a left-handed batter, and he threw eight of, eight of the nine cut fastballs over 100 miles an hour. Look, Mariano Rivera back in the day, Mo Rivera threw upper 90s. He wasn't 100 miles an hour. This is, this is sick. I mean, if this guy can get movement on his cutter like Mariano Rivera did, this kid might be the closer of all closers where his stuff is going to be unhittable. But yeah. we'll see. Uh, I, I I was hoping that uh, that he was going to be able to um, get away from the whole uh, PED usage and and put that past him, and and it's early in the season. I mean, hopefully he will get it past him. And uh, but what I've seen to this point, and I know it's early, and and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do any cartwheels to, uh, at least for a couple of months. You're never doing cartwheels, right? Oh, I can try. No, uh, please I mean, don't. You know, I might hurt myself, but I can try. Look, I'm not gonna celebrate anything until uh, a, a certain point in time. But I'm looking at this. 
Yeah, I, I could see where the Indians use this kid as a closer. If you're silly enough to do a cartwheel, I will not call an ambulance because you earn the right to lay on the floor in pain. <laughs> it's not like I'm going to kill myself if I do one of those. I think you might. I wow. think you might. Yeah, you, you might you be might right. You might dangerously hurt yourself. You, you might be. You might be seriously right, especially if there's chairs or anything in a vicinity. Uh, and, you know, the cartwheel is supposed to be the the legs are supposed to go up straight. I have a no, feeling. God. I have a feeling mine wouldn't even be anywhere resembling that. You would go flat on your head. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that would be. I, I don't even. I don't even want to see it. Uh, if if I were to decide to do something like that, somebody would need to to uh, video. T- I don't think you would even get me lift up the jump. So you would just lay right on your side. Man, that's just wrong. Yeah, oh, man, that's, that's wrong on so many. Man. You have no faith in me. None. None. All right. Not to do a cartwheel. Uh, okay. So. Well, I mean, I I don't think it would be done very well. But Poe knows uh, a lot. Poe does not know cartwheels. I don't think it would be done very well, but I think I could. Somewhat do one, somewhat. So you're saying you could do one without looking like a complete? Oh no! Oh, absolutely I not. Mean, no, so I, it would look horrible. De- define like you do, like you actually go without falling. Is that what we're defining it as? I don't even know if I could do it without falling. Right. So you can't do anything that even resembles a cartwheel, in my opinion. Yeah. I'd have to be the, the building would have to be clear of anything within a fifty feet radius for me to try this. We have this. plenty of room right here. Oh no, I, I you know you there's these chairs out. We got plenty. Yeah, of there's room plenty of room. I I I just I don't now, think it to, would we be. We have to get Ron courage enough to do it. I, I don't I don't think that it would go very well. <laughs> no, uh, I don't think so either. Yeah, I think it would. I think it would be. Uh, I think it would be pretty ugly, as a matter of fact. I but think you'd you know, go, you'd go right into the uh, the the audible call desk. We get an audible call. Potesta oh, tried to cartwheel. Oh, <laughs> and this is what happens. Ron's head stuck in the table. You know? Oh, Lord. Yeah, no, that's something that would uh, that would be really interesting. If you want to see Ron do a cartwheel, call in and let uh, us No, know. no, no. We, we can turn no. this camera right over. Uh, no, that's, you. that's quite all right. All right, three, 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 oh. push-ups on the show. Well, it wasn't push-ups. It no, was, it was the, planking, uh, right? We had yeah, I was planking. Right. And I think I, I lasted like 20, 20 seconds, yeah. 25 yeah. seconds. Yeah. Wasn't bad. Longer than DT expected. So yeah, maybe it wasn't. Some prizes. It wasn't bad. I, I, you know, it wasn't bad. I, I, I probably can do a little bit better, but you know, we'll, we'll uh, try that another time. All right, three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. The MPV Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. I just I watch people do those cartwheels and backflips and whatnot. I'm like, oh yeah, I can. No, no. 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 Wish I no. could. Wish I could. All right, uh, Canfield Fitch tonight at seven o'clock. Are we broadcasting this game on YSN? Let me check I our hope. schedule. I hope. As um. Yes. Uh, yes. DJ Lin- said yes. Landon Meidelshees uh, is going to be the uh, expected starter in the championship game because he's the ace, and uh, you know, let him pitch against Austin Town Fitch. And we'll we'll see what happens there. But uh, this uh, man, this will be a fun game. And and they uh, they have it at Fitch. Uh, it's uh, the lights uh, will obviously be turned on because the game's starting at seven o'clock tonight. Uh, again, this is the uh, eight team tournament that was uh, put together in really really quick fashion. Uh, congratulations uh, to uh, to Canfield and and Fitch for putting this uh, this very quick eight team. Uh, two pole tournament uh, together. Games have been played at Fitch and Canfield this week. And again, Canfield uh, went undefeated in their pole. Uh, they beat Newton Falls eleven to one. Akron Firestone seven to nothing. Yesterday they shut out Howland two to nothing. Again, Howland is going to be a, a a thorn in a lot of people's side this year. That was a uh, that was a solid solid game uh, from what I understand and. And a hard-earned victory for uh, Canfield yesterday. Uh, Fitch knocked off Benedictine on Monday, six to nothing. Illyria yesterday, seven to nothing. They beat Notre Dame Cathedral Latin yesterday, uh, ten to two. So Canfield plays Fitch tonight uh, at seven o'clock. Two undefeated teams. 
this is going to be a lot of fun. Be Under a the lot lights. Of fun. Under the lights. Indeed. Uh, you know, Canfield has already, um, they've already beaten Salem this year. And apparently, um, Salem, their number one pitcher, is headed to Youngstown State. That's who they, that's who they faced in that game. Uh, Canfield played Akron Holbin and beat Holbin. Right. Their ace is committed to Cincinnati, and he pitched against Canfield, and Canfield beat him. Uh, yeah, this, is, this could be a lot of fun tonight. Like we said at the top, uh, here's a news flash. Canfield is good at baseball. Yeah. I mean, like, they, they got the stars aligned right now, um, and, and things are looking really good for, for the Redbirds. Yeah, and, well, I mean, Fitch is good, too. I mean, Fitch both of these teams are, are mm. unbelievably this impressive. Might be the, this might be the tiebreaker game if they split in the AAC uh, series, the bragging rights game. There you go. You know? There you go. Well, I mean, this game... It doesn't it, count towards the AAC officially, but... It's for all intents and purposes the the, the bragging rights game to decide a, a tiebreaker if they end up tying in the AAC games. Yeah, this this is going to be uh, this going to be a huge game. By the way, uh, kudos to uh, to Braden Gebhardt who pitched yesterday for Howland. Uh, he gave up single runs in the fourth and sixth innings. Uh, he struck out five, walked four. Uh, but again, you limit Canfield and that juggernaut offense to just five hits. Yeah, and unfortunately, you're doing a pretty those, good job. Those four walks come back to haunt you. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, and, and you can't, uh, you know, you, you can't give a team like uh, Canfield extra at bats. Uh, and you know, when, whether it's walking someone, whether it's uh, having an error, uh, you just cannot. Cannot give a team like Canfield extra outs. And we, we brought we brought up Petro's line earlier. He was up for the stats. I mean, I mean he was up for the, the task. You know, Gibhart came with the heat, pitched really well, and, uh, you know, he, he matched them. Toe for toe, seven innings pitched, complete game, three hits, no runs, one walk, seven strikeouts in 81 pitches. Yeah. So very efficient. Very efficient indeed. And, uh, you know, again, uh, Canfield knocking off Howland. Uh, Howland suffers their first loss of the season. They're 6-1. and one. Canfield goes to 7-0 and oh on the campaign. Uh, the Cardinals will play undefeated Austin Town Fitch. I believe Fitch is either 6-0 and oh or 7-0. and oh, So this is going to be a hell of a game tonight. This, I, I can't wait to see who's umpiring this game tonight. <laughs> Hopefully... Uh, Hopefully we get to see uh, the best of the best uh, umpiring this game. And to answer anyone's questions, no, I am not umpiring this game. (laughs) I wish I were, but I am not. Uh, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. We'll take a timeout, be back with more. It is a Thursday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. Hello, I'm Greg Burbick with G. Burbick Farms. For the last 100 years, my family has farmed in the Columbiana and Mahoning counties. I began raising cattle in 1996 with the goal of providing a better product for you and your family on the dinner table. Our grass-fed and grain-supplemented black Angus beef were raised with no hormones, steroids, or antibiotics. We are known for our hometown-friendly service and incredible tasting products. We are locally owned and have customers across the tri-state area. Our products go from our farm to your family. Stop by our farm on New Buffalo Road or visit us on the web at gburbickfarms.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. G. Burbick Farms, it just tastes better. This is Tommy Clem, owner of WRS Insurance Solutions. WRS Insurance Solutions is a local, independent agency that specializes in life, Medicare, long-term care, and disability products. Call us at 330-953-3722 or visit us at wrsinsurancesolutions.com to learn more. Good luck to all the student-athletes in the Valley. 
Right now is a great time to get more for your trade-in at Tri-State Ford and drive home in a new or pre-owned vehicle. Choose from our great selection of new Ford models or pre-owned vehicles. Plus, get the Tri-State Ford Advantage, including a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty and more. At Tri-State Ford, we'll pay you top dollar for your trade. But you don't have to purchase one of ours to sell us yours. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit tristateford.net. News doesn't stop after the sun goes down. Sometimes you just have to hustle to get it. At 21 News, no matter how far it is, no matter what it takes to get there, we're working to bring you the best stories and the freshest content at 11 p.m. with the context and clarity that makes it worth staying up for, no matter what time it is. 21 News at 11 with me, Aaron Simonek and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 11, news that's worth your time. Your teams work hard and give it all they've got. Well, so does ours. Because 21 Sports and YSN give you extra effort when covering local sports. 21 Sports and YSN, winning coverage of our Valley's teams. No matter what the weather, be prepared with a reliable, efficient, rude gas furnace or air conditioner from MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Call your energy efficient expert, MP Vivo, today for a free estimate. Here at MP Vivo, we rely on rude, and so should you. Myers Family Insurance knows the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. It's storm season. I think we're under the gun for some heavy storms over the next couple of hours. And Storm Tracker 21 is ready. This is probably the one we're keeping a closer eye on. On air. And locally, we're going to have a lot of eyes on our area. Online. All right, let's talk high risk future cast and the timing of this weather. On social media and on our app. Notice we'll have scattered showers on Thursday. Stay ready with Storm Tracker 21. The severe weather threat now through around sunset. Your first and last stop with your tax return should be with me, Tracy Bryden at Greenwood Chevrolet in Austin Town. No other dealer goes the extra mile to bring you the largest selection of vehicles at one convenient location. With guaranteed credit approval, I will find you the right vehicle and the right financing options for you. I am ready to go the extra mile to show you why no other dealer sells more cars, finances more, and gets you more for your refund than Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. Welcome back to a Thursday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Ron Potesta with you alongside Anthony Hartwig. We're with you till 3 o'clock. Taking your phone calls on the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline, 330-886-0813. Jason Kokrak is uh, on the course. This is round number one of the Masters down in Augusta. And uh, Kokrak is even through two holes. Okay. So we will uh, actually now even through three holes. Uh, so we will uh, keep you updated on that. He is tied for 13th. Uh, the leader right now, uh, there are three golfers who are currently three under par today. Uh, Hideki Matsuyama is, uh, is one of them. Siwoo Kim uh, is another one. And the uh, third is the... Um, I don't even know where this guy is from. Uh, Christian uh, Biesendhout. He is uh, three under. German, Belgian. The RSA. What is RSA? It's Russia, right? Um, okay, well, maybe. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming. I, I, I would have thought that Russians weren't allowed to uh, um, defect because aren't they still communist? 
or no. or did they uh, or did they kill that uh, government a while ago? I don't think they killed, I don't think the U- USSR exists anymore. Yeah, it probably doesn't. Yeah, no. history history one potesta nothing. Uh, anyway, a three-way tie for uh, first place at three under par, and then you have a um, a quartet of golfers. China, China at is two under. Is. Yeah, China is. I don't and think Russia Cuba is. is. I don't think Russia is anymore. Okay. Well, anyway, um, you got three golfers at three under par uh, right now. Um, the guy that that uh, Brian Tolnar said uh, predicted would win the uh, tournament, Patrick Reed, is actually having a really good day. Uh, he is one under through seven, so not too shabby, uh, not too shabby. The big boys have not, uh, a lot of the big boys, I should say, have not teed off yet. Because um, uh, they're waiting for TV. Well, I, I don't know. I think this was just uh, the luck uh, of the draw. Our guy, who we both think is going to win this tournament, Justin Thomas, doesn't tee off until 148. So he is the second to the last group uh, to uh, to tee off. The last group to tee off is um, at two o'clock. Uh, Spieth and Morikawa are two of the guys that are going to tee off at uh, at two o'clock today, and that's the last group. So we'll see what happens. See what happens today. But uh, the weather is apparently gorgeous in uh, in Augusta. Uh, it's seventy eight degrees uh, and. Who knew our weather was going to be just as good as their weather? Right. Yeah. So there you we go. We got some really good weather. I love it. I love it. Yeah, that was uh, that was a treat. Um, earlier in the week, we I, I wouldn't have to. I didn't have to wear the you know the uh, the uh, little jacket. jacket on top of the uh, umpiring gear. Did, did we also call it? To, I mean, you you had some sponsorship today too. I mean, you're rocking the sponsors. Yeah, I'm, last I'm rocking TV. the uh, I'm rocking the uh, G Burbick Farms gear in the G Burbick Farms studio. I yeah, mean, absolutely. Yeah, it love, just tastes better. Love the brand placement. I, I'm telling you, I I, uh, I I saw the I saw the outfit. I was like, well, I want to wear the uh, the black warm up uh, pants that I have. So what goes with that? And I was like, oh yeah, the G Burbick Farms shirt. It's black. Red, uh, the red letters, black shirt, it goes perfect with the uh, with the uh, with the pants I'm wearing today. So, I, and I have my black shoes on. So, uh, all black everything. Uh, just call me Johnny Cash, there and everything go. is good. Everything is and good. The fashion segment of Running Point is now concluded. <laughs> the Calvin Klein po- portion of the show, or the uh, Versace portion of the show, is now complete. All right, three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. Uh, Mister Basketball was announced uh, yesterday, and uh, uh, the uh, gentleman from Akron St. Vincent St. Mary uh, wound up winning Mister Basketball. Mister Basketball has been around since the late eighties, and I was looking at the list of winners. You know our area has only had one Mr. Basketball. That, that's it. One. Could you name him? Is it before my time or is it? 1990. Yeah, I wasn't born yet, so I don't think Okay, so. all right. Bob Patton Jr. Okay. Uh, in Liberty. Uh, his father coached the Liberty Leopards. They went to the state championship game. Uh, they wound up losing the state championship game, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Bob Patton Jr. is the one and only uh, Mr. Basketball from our area. So, Where did he uh, go on to play? Do you know? I want to say he uh, stayed home and played at Youngstown State, but I might be wrong on that. Uh, but, yeah, one and only. Uh, I, I say we, uh, we need to change that. Uh, hopefully next year one of our... Uh, one of our kids will step up, have a ridiculous year, and get to win the uh, Mr. Basketball for the state of Ohio. I think that would be cool. LeBron James did it not once, not twice. He did it three times. That's like a duh. Yeah. So LBJ uh, won it his sophomore, junior, and <laughs> senior years. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm. You imagine if he had, if the NBA. Uh, or, yeah, if the NBA had made the rule, high school 
players have to have to participate at least one year in college ball. Does it? Does LeBron stay at Akron and go to go to Akron no, I, and play basketball for the Zips? What was it? Wasn't he committed to somewhere before he made the decision? To oh, I'm him? sure he was probably committed to one of the colleges. I thought he was ready to go to Ohio State, but I I could be wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that he, I'm sure that he wink wink nudge nudge, uh, said, oh yeah, I'll, I'm I'm committed to go Imagine here. The offers that guy got. Oh, good lord! For football and basketball. Yeah, well, and. and for those not, uh, he's probably got a handful of offers for for football. Yeah, for those that that aren't aware, he was a first team All State at split end, right, uh, or tight end. I'm sorry, uh, in in high school. So he he wasn't a bad football player. He was a pretty good football player. Multiple sport athletes. Exactly, exactly. I would love. Um, I've been saying this for years. I would love. For the NBA and the NCAA to be on the same page on a um, on a plan to well, 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 before that, you have to get the NCAA on the same page with themselves. Well, that's you true. Get them on the same yeah, page. duly noted, by the way, because their conferences are not on the same page at all, and it's just kind of a you go do your thing, you go do your thing, and then you know well, what is what, well. What? I mean, you and I have talked about this, and I think um, uh, uh, Brian Driscoll. Uh, was the first one to say this, and, and I think the more I think the, Mac Brown was the first one to say it. Well, Brian Driscoll had, had said there's going to come a point in time where the Power oh, Five is going were, to I say. I thought you were saying like the commissioner. Yeah, like the, Power it's... Five is going to go right and and leave the NCAA, and they're going to be amongst themselves along with Notre Dame, and then the rest of Division One will be under the umbrella of the NCAA. I think they might uh, find out that that's not as easy as it sounds because there's still a lot of stuff that goes with running the NCAA that may, maybe they don't know about. Um, oh, I, I agree with and that. What happens if they do that and it folds or it doesn't work out? They can't just go back to the NCAA and be like, we messed up. Let us back in. Yeah. Because the NCAA would be like, uh, no. <laughs> Denied. No, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> NCAA. Um, so it'd be interesting to see if if that happens, it better work. Because if if something you know falls under the the floor, what's the safety net? There is none. There is none. Yeah. It, it, look, I've been I've been saying this for years for the NBA and the NCAA. If you want to let your high school kids yeah, from senior year go on and get drafted in the NBA, I got no problems with that. Now, having said that, what I would like to see. <laughs> The, uh, the NBA do is provide a G League team for every single every single NBA team has their quote farm system team in the G League so then you would have 30 30 teams uh, in playing essentially AAA basketball expand the NBA draft to three rounds allow your high school players uh, who have no interest in going to college if you want to take part in the NBA draft, have at it. For those of you that want to stay or go to college, then the rule of uh, football and baseball is going to apply. You have to stay in college at least three years before you're eligible to uh, go into the NBA draft. And I think you, doing that, the G League would be filled with kids that can't make it to the NBA or um, aren't mature enough or old enough or whatever to make it to the NBA on a consistent basis. So you'd have G League uh, playing essentially AAA basketball, and then you have the NBA. Uh, well, see what, what's the difference? You're playing AAA basketball in Division One basketball anyway. You could argue the Power of Five is pretty much AAA basketball for the NBA. It, it is it, somewhat. It is. I mean, not all of those kids are good enough to be in the uh, in the G League. I bet. I bet if you took the the, the Power Five, I bet more than fifty percent would be good enough at least to play in the G League. Fifty percent of the players, the starters. Yeah. Uh, now remember, G League is not like, hey, we're going to be an NBA player. It's it's like we're good enough to be in the G League. 
I feel like... Yeah, but a couple of those kids could probably play in the NBA. Right. I mean, more than just a couple like of those you, kids. Just like a couple of the kids that are going to be playing in the G League probably could play in the NBA now. They're just not a spot for them on a roster. Yeah, whatever, maybe. yeah. So I just don't see the difference between playing one year in the NCAA and playing one year in a G League trip other than getting paid. Well, yeah. I mean, it, it, which, right, essentially, if you want to get paid. already said, hey, we're going to let you make, make an, money off your likeness, so you're going to be able to get paid in the NCAA now. Yeah, but how much are you going to be making in your likeness as compared to how much is a team willing to give up and, and give question. you for a season? Um, you, you know, that and the fact that, uh, again, if you stay in college, you have to you have to stay in college for three years. You know, improve your game in college for the three years. The NCAA becomes a better product because you no longer have the one and done kids. So now you have kids that are that are committed to to being in college basketball for three years. So that product gets better. The NBA gets better because you're no longer having guys dealing with the idea of oh I got to play one year in in college ball before I go and and put uh, put myself eligible of wise into the NBA draft. I mean it, it works great all the way around. I I just don't understand why the NBA and the NCAA can't can't agree on this. I just I don't get that one. But uh, and, and maybe it would sound too much like a because the uh, NCAA wants the kids that are NBA ready to come play for them for a year to help their brand. To, to, they want to see the Zion Williams in the NCAA tournament. I get that, but wouldn't and, you rather have the kids that? maybe aren't good enough to go straight to the NBA. What gets more eyeballs on the TV, though? The ones that you know, oh, this is going to be a superstar. I'm going to watch him at Duke. Or, oh, this kid might make it in the NBA. I'm going to watch him for three years. You know, I mean, which one gets more? Yeah, but you don't know if uh, if a handful or more than a handful of those kids are going to be eye-popping in year two or year three. I mean, it's honestly. I think it'll be a better brand of basketball long term. It'll be a better brand of basketball, but will it be a better product as far as getting people to watch? Because that's just people expect basketball, especially on the men's side, to look like it does in the NBA, and you're not going to do that if you don't have at least some NBA talent in the NCAA right now. They want they when when. I, I imagine the the majority of college basketball fans watch college basketball, but they expect a little bit of the spice that you get from the NBA. They realize it's dialed down, it's watered down, it's not flashy superstar entertainment like the NBA is. It's not that level. But they want to see a kid drive right down the middle and dunk over somebody every now and then. Sure. And, and, and if you don't have that in the NCAA, because they're all going straight to the NBA out of high school, then does that hurt your product as far as people watching? Yeah, but how many of those, when when you had the rule where high school kids could go straight to the NBA, how many of them actually took advantage of that? Not many. Uh, yeah. Not many could. Well, Let's and, be honest, it took a special, special person to be able to come and those out that, of high school and be right in the NBA. And, and those that tried, unfortunately, if you didn't make it, well, you closed the avenue with college basketball. Right. Because you hired an agent... You rolled the dice, saying, "Okay, this is no longer a this is no longer a uh, an well, see, option for me because you know, I've I've decided to turn pro." I think one of the good things now is you don't have to hire an agent anymore to test the waters of the NBA. Like that's why a lot of kids can take their time now deciding whether or not they want to come back for a year of college or not because they have the opportunity to. Um, send their film into NBA people and get responses back before they make the decision whether or not they want to officially enter the NBA draft or stay in the NCAA. But before before they could do that, it was pretty much you make your decision. Do you want to test your luck in the NBA or stay in the NCAA? Now they can kind of test the waters a little bit, and it makes it easier to make that decision. But I think it would be it would be easier for a player to test the waters if every single team had a quote farm team because not everyone has a G League team, not everyone has a G League affiliation. There's only a certain is, amount of is teams. Is the money in the G there League. for every team to have a G League team? I, I would think so. I, I, I would think so. I know the Cavaliers have their team in Canton. Now, 
how many people in a normal environment, COVID free, how many people normally go watch a G League game? I, I would imagine maybe a thousand, if that. Uh, would it change if you had a little bit better of a product in the G League? Uh, thanks to some kids that make the jump from high school, but they're not good enough to go straight to the NBA, so they go to the G League and play for a year? I don't know. And it, and it would sound a little too much like a farm system uh, in Major League Baseball. You know, One of the reasons why college baseball, with all due respect to Youngstown State, who's having a wonderful year, one of the reasons why college baseball has never, never really been brought into the uh, to the picture in comparison to NCAA men's basketball and men's football. You know, baseball is, well, most of those kids are, uh, most of the really, really good kids aren't playing college baseball. They're already in minor league baseball. And even your really, really good guys, you're not going to see them in the pros for another two or three years. So it's not the automatic, I watched this kid in college and he's going to go right to my team. It's just not – there's a disconnect because of the, the nature of baseball. Yeah, and, and the aluminum bat uh, that they use, wooden bat that they have to use in the pros, uh, a lot of other kind of things that are different from the college game to the pro game. So it's, um, it, it's different, uh, but for whatever reason, um, they don't get the same amount of eyeballs uh, that they normally get. Uh, when when baseball does their version of March Madness, uh, and they have the NCAA tournaments, which is uh, 16, 16 sites, each and site did, has four teams. Did you see this year that, that they're going to have predetermined regional and super regional sites, and it's not going to be based on just straight up the 16 national Oh, sites. I didn't know that. Yeah, the NCAA just said, we don't want to deal with, you know, we, we want to have control over where people are going because of obviously COVID. So they're going to be 16 regions that are just predetermined host sites. Have they decided which, which regions? Not yet. All right. And the super regionals are also going to be predetermined just based on facilities and the ability to accommodate COVID protocols. Well, I would, that would suck so if like, you're in for softball, for softball, like uh, J- um, James Madison is usually pretty good, good enough to get a top 16 seed. I imagine they're they're not going to host this because the the NCAA doesn't think they have the facilities and the the ability to accommodate COVID protocols with four teams in there for the weekend. So it sucks for the small teams that are pretty like the Coastal Carolinas for for baseball. Um, it sinks for them. They're probably going to just go to the the biggest stadiums that that they can kind of get their people into. You would hope. Like I bet, I bet the SEC will be filled the regions, and then the, yeah. Pac, the Pac-12 will probably get some for the West. Maybe Oklahoma, Nebraska will probably be a, a, a host site because it's so close to Omaha. For That's weird. I, I would hope, and I'm not saying this because Vanderbilt is, you know, anything know special, but I would are. hope that Vanderbilt is the number one ranked team in the country. You I would hope they would have. One of their I'm sure they'll facilities. host. I'm sure they'll host. Ooh, sorry about that. Oh, I was, I'm sure they'll host. Um, I, I know softball a lot more, so I could really predict the softball hosting. I, I bet uh, you'll see Oregon host in the in the West because they have the best facilities in the country, hands down. You'll probably see UCLA host for the you know California teams, Oklahoma for sure because they're right next to Oklahoma City. Um, probably Texas. Then you go to the SEC. Your Alabama has to host because you're just the iconic spot to go for softball. Um, probably Tennessee. Well, how many is that? Five. Yeah. Uh, Michigan's gonna host in the north. And then you kind of fill up other stuff like you know you'll go back down south. You'll probably have LSU. Uh, host a regional. You'll probably have Baylor host a regional. Arizona. All right. Yeah, you know what I'm, I mean. Like the, you're not going to see the small teams get their host anymore. Not this year. Well, not, they normally they normally don't see, host unless you're a, unless you're one of the 16 teams. Right. Right. 
uh, in the in the country. But look, I mean, as a Penguins fan, you want Youngstown State to Youngstown State win the Horizon right. League and and go into this tournament. They'll probably. I mean, I would imagine the biggest the biggest school that's close to Youngstown State in as far as the softball facilities goes is Michigan. So they'll probably pop right into the Michigan region. Interesting. Now, I don't know if that automatically means that Michigan will be in their own region or if they'll still try to make it even as far as where teams go compared to um, compared to where they fit in the bracket. Well, I would hope. I imagine the teams would host – the teams would stay at their host sites. Yeah, I would hope so. So even I mean, if – it doesn't make any if, it doesn't make any sense if Michigan has a, <laughs> has a site and they're one of the 16 best teams. Right. It makes perfect sense for them – to host their own site, that would be stupid not to. But if they're not a 16 seed, do you get them? Do you make them go somewhere else, or do you let them host a regional, even though they're not a top 16? That's that's going to be a question. Well, I, to look, I mean, the NCAA has done that before, right? So it, it wouldn't surprise me if they were to sit back and say, "Oh yeah, you're not the uh, you're not the number one seed, but you're going to um, you're going to host your own uh, your own." Um, uh, tournament even though you're not the number one seed it's still going to go to uh to your place by the way people that are waiting for coach titus to call in at two from mcdonald she did contact us and say that there's things um outside of her control popped up and, and she wasn't going to be able to call in today so we will try to fetch her for next thursday and just bump her a week and fetch her what are we dogs here yeah. You know, we'll, we'll get whatever. You, you know, Ron. <laughs> Sit. Uh, I'm about to. I'm about to just let you do the rest of the show by yourself. Hey, 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 hey! You know better than that. <laughs> um, but we still have uh, Dave Crisman calling in at 2:20 from Lisbon Softball. So, we'll we'll still get your your softball fixed today. Don't worry. Yeah, and Lisbon. Um, Lisbon is four one of the better teams in the EOAC. They, they made a huge statement against United. Yes, on they Monday did. And Tuesday. They beat them on Monday at United twenty four to two, and they beat them on Tuesday at Lisbon twelve to two. So they outscored them by a total of thirty six to four. Is this going to come down to Lisbon and Columbia? I think so. I think after seeing that, uh, I, I, I would very much imagine that it will come down to Lisbon Columbia. Um, they're both rolling right now on all cylinders. Yeah, and when they meet, it's going to be fun. Yeah, Columbiana um, getting past Letonia pretty easily, uh, twenty-three to one uh, yesterday in Letonia, and uh, Lisbon, as I, as we may mention, uh, getting past United for uh, two straight games. So, Columbiana and uh, Lisbon probably on a collision course. Uh, Lisbon went up against Ursland yesterday and. Uh, it started out well. Yeah, they had a one nothing lead after one half inning, and then Ursland batted and uh, didn't turn out very well. Justice Vrabel went off the game for Lisbon with a home run. And then they had runners on with less than two outs, and uh, they got hit into a double play where they lined the ball to third and then got caught off the bag. So that kind of ended any kind of offensive threat they had for the rest of the game. And it gave Ursland a lot of momentum heading into the first, bottom of the first. And they took advantage of it. They got their first two runners on, and Alyssa Sheely hit a three-run bomb. And before Lisbon could blink, they were down 3-1 to one and eventually 5-1 to one before the inning ended. Yeah, and then they wound up getting down 9-1 to one after two innings. Uh, Ursland scored four more runs in the bottom of the fourth inning to make it 13-1. to one. Uh, Lisbon didn't help themselves out in the field. They committed four errors in the game, but... Uh, you know, when Ursland's top six hitters are, what did you say, 11 of 11? Through the first four innings. Now, they did manage to get a couple of them out in the fourth and the fifth innings. Uh, but th- through the first four, the top six lineups, if I remember correctly, because I, I said it when I saw it, were a, a combined 11 for 11, one through six, with a couple of walks and a couple of reach on it. So, yeah, that's that's yeah. impressive. Including the the home run, of course, from from Chile. Yeah, that's impressive. That, there's nothing you can do about that one. Yeah. Yeah, that that is uh, that is very now, very impressive. The Irish will have to, you know, try to make sure that it's not to the point where their first six are hitting on all cylinders, and their their seven, eight, nine are just kind of a uh, for show hitters because, you know, that, that that'll hurt you in the tournament, but. Um, if they can make sure that their lineup is consistent and those seven, eight, nine hitters are at least setting the table for that top of the lineup, uh, then they're going to be super dangerous 
come tournament time. Yeah, they certainly will. And and you know, again, if you have a they're division three. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. They might be two. I feel like they're three in softball. Yeah, they're three in softball. Mooney's two in in softball. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, South and the Range, boys are flip flopped. So D three, it's in South Range. It's Ursuline in there. Champions in there. It's going to be a fun. You know, we're we're gearing for a fun May in, in Division three softball. Yeah, we uh, we we don't talk very much about champion, but they're they lurking. Haven't play, they haven't played a lot. They've had a lot of games kind of get swept under their feet, but they did play Newton Falls last night, beat them uh, nine to nothing. Emma Gamont trying to find, starting to find her rhythm. You know, she wasn't a pitcher for them uh, two years ago. She, they, they, their pitching staff was locked in with the two Division one aces that they had thrown for them. So, starting to get a little bit more innings repped for Emma Gamont, the senior. Uh, she pitched uh, all seven innings. I think uh, gave up like three hits with uh, nine strikeouts, and uh, they beat Newton Falls nine to nothing. So they're they're two and three on the year, with two wins over Newton Falls and losses to Perry. Who was that? They, they they lost two on one day. Will, will it be South? Perry, yeah, Will it be South? Was and one of them. Uh, they lost to another non conference team. So and now they play Indian Valley tonight, and their their schedule is just loaded, absolutely loaded. Uh, next week they play Boardman, um, so we'll, we'll see how the champion fares throughout the rest of the season. Well, and again, it, it's one of those situations where uh, Cheryl Weaver, like everyone else, you have to uh, figure out uh, which kids have varsity experience, and and again, the varsity experience only comes from two classes because uh, the last time we played. Uh, spring sports, your seniors were just sophomores, your juniors were just freshmen. So how many of the uh, seniors and juniors uh, were playing uh, varsity softball in this case in 2019? And if you have some folks uh, that, that were playing varsity uh, softball back then, then, uh, then you've got a pretty good situation right now. Yeah, and we, we brought, I brought up in McGamon, she played last, you know, her, her freshman and sophomore year, but she wasn't a pitcher. She didn't have to pitch for them. So she's starting to get her groove in the circle. That's why you're seeing those numbers get inflated a little bit in the first couple of games. Yeah, and Champion will be heard from. I mean, oh, let's, let's yes. be, uh, state, state the obvious, Champion will most definitely be heard from. But, you know, your point is well taken. I mean, South Range is Division Three, Ursuline is Division Three, Columbiana is Division <laughs> Three. Uh, yeah, there, there's going to be some pretty absolutely loaded Especially, I mean, if we, do, if we do another super region, super, super And I district, think that's what's coming. You know, Crestview is also Division Three. They're Division Three so, as well. So, let's have some fun. Yeah, yeah I mean... I expect baseball to follow in the same footsteps as as basketball, where you will have the district to the north will be your partner, right? And let's have some fun here. Load the districts up It'll and be, and, and uh, seat them top to bottom, and let's have some fun. I know it's it's kind of it's early to talk about tournaments because we're only like a couple weeks into the season, but it's going to be really interesting to see where teams fall and what teams. Other teams try to avoid compared to what teams say. We can go in this bracket and and maybe match up pretty well with the, this team. I just I think the matchups and we can do this as the season progresses. But the matchups, my goodness, this could be fun. The way and, it's going, I think South Range will get the one seed because they're going down to Myrtle Beach and they've only lost one game down there. They've only lost one game on the year. Uh, and if they keep that going and they go through their schedule with one or two losses, I don't see how you couldn't make them the one seed. Ursuline's undefeated right now. I mean, uh, I, I don't know. I, I uh, All I know is um, it, it, you pick your way, poison. By the way, Ursuline has not had a seven-inning game yet. No. All their wins have been five-inning run rolls. Yeah, so. that's, uh, that's the impressive part of that as well. Um, it's been like... <laughs> you uh, you knock people out that quickly, um, that's that's impressive. That that's really impressive. So uh, I'm going to be real curious to see not just in softball. I'm going to be real curious to see uh, how we do this in baseball. Uh, and again, the expanded district tournaments, we expect it to be the the, the exact same thing in baseball and softball. 
uh, where you'll combine the two districts together, seed everyone top to bottom, uh, and then let's go. Uh, do you do you have the stones to do what JFK <laughs> did and ace. say and and say, oh, you're the number one seed. We're taking you. We're we're gonna take you, and we're gonna go into your and, into your bracket. And we're not gonna, we're not just gonna beat you. We're gonna take you to the woodshed because that's what JFK did in that game. And I'm they still just, shaking my head at at the decision, and it, and it turned out to be a great decision uh, by JFK. They clearly thought, hey, they did there's something scouting. about us that we match up well against right. them. They did their scouting. They knew they watched tape, whatever it may be, and they knew we matched up really well with McDonald, so let's not avoid them. Let's just go right at them. And. You know, in baseball, and we've said this, baseball and softball. It's so fickle, though. I mean, baseball and softball are a lot more fickle than that. Yeah, but, I mean, mean. two good arms, solid defense, and timely hitting. And you can go a whole long, long way into the tournament. That's another reason. I mean, you can't take too, too much stock in the baseball regular season in high school. Especially, like, the games later in the week because you're throwing their third or fourth pitcher. Sure. Guys that you know won't be starting in the tournament, so it's like, you know, team, like like KFK lost fourteen to one last night, but they were on their third start. So you know that's just not going to happen consistently. You know that doesn't reflect the KFK's team. Baseball's just flickle, fickle. I'm wondering. You're going to throw some games where you lose fourteen to one. It's just going to happen. And, and to your point, I'm wondering how many coaches are going to recognize that and say, "Wait a second. You know, this particular game, they may have thrown their third or fourth starter where they normally wouldn't throw that pitcher uh, in a tournament game because you're only going to pair your starters down to to two, and then your guys that you normally would pitch game three or game four, they're going to wind up pitching out of the bullpen. That's another thing. It's like you can't use those three and four guys as relievers for your ones and twos because they have to start the next day. With the tournament, you can. Your your three guys going to be your number one reliever. All of a sudden, just makes teams a lot tougher. Oh, tournament. absolutely, uh, yeah. And I just I think that the uh, the tournaments are going to be a lot of fun because now you have two districts <laughs> combined into a big one, uh, and all of a sudden, uh, you've got an immense amount of talents all over the place in uh, in each district, yeah. and it's just it's going to make. It's going to make the baseball and softball tournaments that much better. Mo better. That's what yeah, we love. It would be a whole lot of fun to watch, uh, especially Division Three in softball. And uh, I'll say it, Division Two in baseball is going to be crazy because you got Canfield and, and you have uh, uh, Cardinal Mooney is – no, they're Division Three. Ursuline is Division Two. Uh, Poland is Division Two. Uh, West Branch – is Division Two Salem is Division Two Alliance. Alliance is Division Two, and if they can ever get their offense together with Bruni pitching, oh my God, um, wow, that could be uh, that could be all kinds of fun to watch. Yeah, we we said it yesterday. Bruni's given uh, ten innings of league play so far, no hits in those ten innings, but he has no uh, wins, all no decisions. Can you imagine it's bad luck. Uh, and again, Prep Baseball Report's going to be in charge of putting the rosters together. I really hope that Bruni is one of the kids that's selected to play in the inaugural draft league. I would love to see this kid pitch every fifth day at, at Eastwood Field. Because right. you know if he gets the invite, he would be going and, and pitching for the scrappers. I would love for this to happen. Love for this to happen. By the way, speaking of the scrappers... Uh, when we had uh, Jordan Taylor on, uh, the announcement for a new manager uh, is forthcoming. Oh, and the he's only still thing dangling that in front of you is the, the only thing that I got when I said, "Can you give me a hint?" Uh, and I asked him, I, I, I flat out asked him, I said, "Is he a former Indian?" He said, "Yes." I said, "Okay. I have an idea who I think the manager is going to be. Sure. Well, I, I share your idea. Come on. I don't. I mean, I don't know if I don't know if I want to because if it doesn't turn out that way, then then it was just a fleeting uh, idea. I, th- there's share there's it. actually two guys that, but but one of them, I believe, is a head coach for one of the colleges 
up in the Cleveland area, and that's Lenny Barker is the uh, is the head coach for the Notre Dame baseball team, not the Notre Dame. Uh, Notre, Dame uh, Notre Dame College up, up in Ohio, up in northeastern Ohio. He is the um, he's the baseball coach. So I I don't know if he would be the uh, uh, the manager of the Mahoning Valley Scrappers. But the other guy that I thought of, uh, former Indian, Super Joe Charbonneau. Super Joe. Oh, the see that I think yeah, I think that would roll off the tongue. I, so uh, I, that's the guy that I thought of, which that would actually be pretty cool if it's Joe Charbonneau. But Joe Charbonneau helps Len Barker over at uh, over at Notre Dame come College. Over. Come on, bring your whole staff. Uh, look, either one. Or both would be ideal, but like I said, I mean it's you know, when I thought when when he when I asked Jordan, "Hey, is it a former Indian?" and he said yes, that was the immediately my first thought was, "Well, it's Lenny Barker or Joe Charbonneau," but both of them are involved with and Notre did Dame. You College. say that, and then Jordan Taylor goes, "I can neither confirm or deny." And that's when you know you're right. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not going to ask him to confirm or deny. Uh, oh, he, uh, but uh, when the uh, when the sixth team, and I think it's Frederick, was looking for their manager, uh, when have, they get their manager, then we'll have, then we'll uh, find out who the manager have is. Have any of the teams announced like a manager yet? No, they're waiting on Frederick. Okay. And five of the six teams have their manager. Okay, but no one has. Um, so they're waiting until everyone hires to exactly. announce. Exactly, exactly. That's what they're waiting on. So uh, hopefully the wait will not be much uh, longer. And wouldn't and it be nice if the NFL there. was like that, where we waited until everyone had a head coach to announce what the head coaches were? That would be nice. Be like sitting on pins and needles because you know your team hired somebody, but you don't know who. Yeah, that, that would you have be. To wait, you have to wait for the straggler to come along and hire a coach. Yeah, that would that would be uh, that would be nice. Uh, you know, for something as big as the NFL, though, you know it would leak. One would hope. Yeah, you, you would hope. You know, it's hard to keep that shut. I yeah. think it's a lot easier to keep this shut than, than uh, the NFL would be. Yeah. Uh, moments from now, uh, the local police over in Rock Hill, South Carolina, are going to be holding a media briefing at 2 o'clock. Um, over in uh, South Carolina, Rock Hill, South Carolina, uh, a local doctor, his wife, two grandchildren – and an employee were all shot to death. And as it turns out, uh, former NFL cornerback Philip Adams uh, was the uh, shooter, apparently. Uh, he, uh, he killed the doctor and his wife, two grandchildren, and an employee, and then took his own life. And um, local authorities in Rock Hill, South Carolina, are going to be... Uh, Holding a media briefing, the name Philip Adams rings a bell. Though, who did he play for? Not I, the, no, it went right over my head. I have no idea. I'm, I'm going to have to. Uh, when we take a commercial break, we'll look it up and then we'll see. Yeah, right. I got. I got to look this. I got to look this one up because it seems to me um, he played for the 49ers or some organization, uh, 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 the Redskins, the 49ers. I, I I know he played in the NFC. Uh, but we'll let's look it up and we'll uh, we'll figure it out. But um, yeah, Philip uh, Philip Adams unfortunately uh, is the uh, is the guy that um, did this horrible act uh, in Rock Hill, South Carolina. All right, we'll take a time out. On the other side, we'll uh, take some phone calls. Three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. We're back in a bit. Stick around. Your first and last stop with your tax return should be with me. Tracy Bryden at Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. No other dealer sells more cars, finances more, and gets you more for your refund than Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. WRS Wealth Advisors is the area's premier wealth and retirement specialist. With our combined 70 years experience and comprehensive wealth strategy, we assist our clients attain their goals. Call 330-965-965. 0370 to learn more about our individual and corporate financial planning services or visit wrswealthadvisors.com. Good luck, athletes. 
Hi everyone, this is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live at no cost to you by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. Ah, the details. Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is one fine ride. Perfect cornering, superb handling, sporty and stylish, power to spare, plus awesome mileage. Yeah, jaw-droppingly beautiful lines and well-appointed with luxurious trim. Put more oomph in your life and start beholding the molding. Find your home's fine hardwood at BairdBrothers.com. For heating, cooling, and indoor air quality, the Mahoney Valley trusts MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning, offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy-efficient experts. Planning a project around your home or rental property? Trust the electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Joe Dickey Electric is your local go-to source for responsive, reliable residential electrical work. From everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and safety inspections, no job is too big or too small. Call Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com. Welcome back to a Thursday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. All right, uh, Philip Adams was uh, drafted after his collegiate career at South Carolina State. He was drafted in uh, the 2010 NFL Draft, seventh round pick of the uh, San Francisco 49ers. Wow, you were right. Yeah, he um, he also played for New England, Oakland. Seattle, the Jets, and Atlanta uh, bounced around a number of uh, a number of teams. Wound up uh, leaving the National Football League for good after the 2015 campaign. Spent his first year with San Francisco. Uh, the next, uh, the second year with the Patriots and the Seahawks. Spent two years with Oakland in 2012 and 2013. Uh, he was an off-season uh, pickup for the Seahawks, put on their practice squad. And then later that year, the Jets got uh, got this kid off the practice squad of the Seahawks, played the rest of the 2014 year with the Jets. And then in 2015, he played for uh, Atlanta, wound up uh, finishing his career with uh, five picks and 15 pass deflections. Apparently, his father has come out and said that um, football might have... Uh, uh, might have messed his son up in terms of the head injuries and the what's the 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 uh, thing now CTE CTE yeah so I I, I would wonder uh, and and I'm sure that uh, the uh, the um, autopsy is going to tell an awful lot uh, about this and you know the the old argument of uh, CTE once again rearing its ugly head. Uh, I, I it would don't be know. the first modern one, though, because I mean the NFL has been a lot more. Yeah, since Junior Seau, it's been it's been pretty quiet about that. Um, and that's, that's it's, tough. It's, it's, that, a tough it, it's a very sad story uh, coming out of South Carolina. It was just a, uh, apparently this former NFL player uh, went on a killing spree. And uh, mass murdered a doctor, his wife, two grandchildren, an employee. Uh, so five people were killed before uh, Philip Adams turned the gun on himself. That's just so a sad did, ending. What, at a hospital or what? I mean, yeah, at, at the guy's home, apparently. What, was an employee? What, well, was he maybe, maybe, maybe he was a uh, uh, someone who uh, was doing some landscaping or a oh. butler or of some some uh, gotcha. uh, some sort. I mean. Yeah, I, I would only assume that. I'm, I, you know, neither one of us are wealthy enough to own uh, or to not own, but to have a butler. 
So careful. Yeah, I I don't know anything about that stuff because I don't make I don't I, Alfred, I don't have that on the money. Alfred, come here. Yeah. Okay, Bruce Wayne. <laughs> You've never seen me and Batman in the same place. The no, same that's time. true. That that is so. true. That is very true. That is very true. You've never seen me and Superman in the same place either. I think I did. No. And you've never done this, so I've done that all the time. Now you do this a lot. Well, I, yeah, because I, I I'm <laughs> ready to sneeze, and I don't want to just you know, and and my eyes well, are watering. You know, if you're Superman, don't sneeze because you'll blow me out the wall. Well, no, I would never do that to you. So I always keep kryptonite in my pocket. Ah, okay, that's the reason why the eyes are watering. Okay, there, there you go. Uh, we can tell you, uh, Jason Kokrak. Uh, bogey's the fifth oh, hole, so please. he is one over. Don't let it, don't let it collapse, you Jason. But uh, we can tell you that uh, there is a new leader on the board in the Masters. Hideki Matsuyama is four under through 13 holes. And I don't believe a Japanese player has ever won the Masters, so if he continues a fine weekend, he would be the first. Patrick Reed who uh, Brian Tolnar said will win the Masters. He is currently two under through nine holes. Uh, He birdied the ninth hole. Uh, So he is halfway through the round at two under par. Bubba Watson is currently at one under through 13 holes, which is uh, huge because um, I have uh, Phil Mickelson beating Bubba Watson head-to-head, and um, Phil is just starting... Uh, and he's already, uh, oh, shoot. <laughs> yeah, did, did I really need to see this? Oh, for the love of God. Holy crap. Did he, did he actually double, triple bogey? Nothing beats live reactions. Oh, no. All right, no, he didn't do that. I have no idea where Mickelson is right now. <laughs> Where the hell is he? Oh, he birdied. Okay. Oh, okay. We just dodged that bullet. Uh, well, I, you know, when you when you look at Phil Mickelson, you assume because he's so damn old that he's going to be bogeying everything under the sun. No, he actually birdied a hole, so he's one under. Well, wait a minute. He, I mean, I know he didn't have a good result, but he had more birdies than anybody at the TPC. Yeah, but he normally, he, and what was it? Brian Tolnar said that he is hell bent on trying to. Hit the ball, uh, as, hit the ball as, as far as the young kids. And right. Dude, you're old. Don't do that. Just play your hey, game. You're only old as you feel, Phil. Don't let these naysayers keep you down. Yeah, but you gotta you got to play your game. You can't sit back and try to play a game that you're not capable of playing anymore. Phil can do whatever he wants. He's won three Masters. DeChambeau is, uh, is even after, uh, three? after no, one two. hole. Phil's won three. He's won three. I was right. Okay. No, never he, is, he, he has won three. Making a note, never second guess myself. No, never second guess yourself. All right. Write uh, that down. Underlined it two times. Right I, I am currently, we, we knock on wood as we say this, I am currently at 60 points, which is putting me to the top. And you need? Uh, about uh, to get into the money, 30 more points. Not bad. Which, uh, it, it's doable. Brian Tolnar is looking at stakes right now. Yeah, it, well, uh, not that much money, but um, but it, it's doable. Hey, if you get $1,000, you're buying Brian Tolnar's stakes. Oh, listen, if I get $1,000, yeah. We're, it, not, it, we're, it, not, we're, it, not, we're not doing like 100000 or it's no not gonna be. It's not going to be peanut butter sandwiches if I win $1,000. You're going to be with this as well because we'll all have steak and we'll all eat like kings for a little while. Uh, but that um, that remains to be seen how we're uh, how we're going to do this. Mr. Westwood is killing me here. Lee Westwood, who I picked over uh, Hatton, is six over Ooh, through well, twelve. You're not going to get the hundred thousand. Well, the, his opponent is two over through four. So I'm hoping that both of them, uh, or that Hatton <laughs> sucks more than Westwood today. Uh, that that would uh, that would help me out tremendously. You both sucked, but one of yeah. you going to have to yeah. suck more than the other. Uh, the the other one wasn't as bad as sucky as you are, Junior. Thank so you. there you go. Uh, Justin Thomas uh, is not uh, well. He actually has started. Uh, Justin Thomas started. Uh, I want to say what twenty minutes ago. He is our pick. Anthony and I's uh, pick 
to win the uh, the Masters, and he is on the first hole. He has not uh, recorded a score yet on the first hole. So you think in twenty minutes, it's not good. Uh yeah. He it's he was good. he's he was scheduled to tee off at one forty eight. It is two oh eight, and they still do not have a uh, score for him. That's a bad omen. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll we'll see what happens here. Um, Eighty eight golfers uh, set to tee off at Augusta today. Golfers. Golfers. Uh, and the top 70 will go to uh, – top 70 or top 60 will uh, will survive. Uh, I guess it would be the top 60 that would survive. Um, names that uh, currently are not doing too well, Sergio Garcia and Rory McIlroy are both plus four. Yeah, Rory's been bad for yeah. quite some time. Yeah, Freddie Couples is uh, – Five over par right now. No, three over par. He triple bogeyed the uh, third hole. Mm. That sounds like something I would do. You would like ten bogey at Augusta. Uh, I don't know. It depends on the hole. There's no hole in Augusta where you would not. No, I beg to differ. Six bogey. I beg to differ. <laughs> okay. I think that I would. I I would undoubtedly bogey every single hole. Can you hit any drive straight? Yes. I can hit a drive straight, uh, not all the time, unfortunately, uh, but I, I can hit a drive straight. Uh, it's just, unfortunately, I can't do it all the time. Um, I, I think at a par three, I could probably single bogey one of those. If I if I got it on the green properly, I could probably single bogey next one week, of them. Write, next week, I'm going to ask Brian Tolnar what hole would be it? The premium for Ron to get a bogey on in Augusta. And if he laughs, and we know nothing. <laughs> well, I'm sure that he's going to laugh. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm kind of chuckling just thinking about the uh, the possibility of just getting a regular bogey. Uh, that would be nice, uh, you know, but we'll see. All right. Uh, so, uh, Coke Rack is through six holes, and he is one over, having bogeyed the par four fifth hole. So uh, right now, right. Jason, in pretty good it's shape. It's written down, and we are not going to miss that. Comedy gold. Next yeah. week, it's happening. Stay Lord. tuned. Wednesday. Yeah. So when we uh, decide whoever is, whoever the heck has won this uh, this tournament, uh, hopefully it's hopefully it's Justin Thomas. Um, whoever the heck wins this tournament, uh, yeah, you'll. Try to throw me under the bus. I appreciate that. You 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 did it yourself. Well, Thinking yeah. You, you 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 puffed your chest up, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. You know, I mean, <laughs> I'm not saying that I could. I'm saying there's a chance that I could. There's a chance. Of course, there's a chance. There's a chance that I could. There's a chance know. you go outside and get struck by lightning. But I mean, is it going to happen? Not on a, a day like today. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Not on a day like today. All right, 330-886-0813, the MPV Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline open for business. Uh, I'd love to get a shot at, at golfing there, but, man, that's that's a lot of money. Uh, that and um, – hey, you win the thing, maybe you can afford a golf, uh, golf round at Matt. I'd Matt. rather go to Pebble Beach. See, I think Pebble See, Beach is – But it, Brian told us that Pebble Beach is underrated. I mean, it's overrated. Overrated. overrated oh, man. I mean, that's uh, Pebble Listen. Beach is just gorgeous, at least on TV it is. But then again, uh, Augusta, and, and Brian said this yesterday, and, and he's right, it, the topography at, at Augusta, you don't, you don't see the hills and whatnot on TV. It doesn't do the course any justice uh, with all the hills and valleys and all that other uh, good stuff. Uh, with Augusta, I've I always thought Augusta was bleh. It was meh. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't uh, all that. All that that's cracked up to be. But then again, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong on that. Now I really want you to go off Augusta's course because you just said that, and Augusta's, and I'd be like, oh, really? <laughs> I'm meh. <laughs> eh. <laughs> eh. Eh. Justin Thomas, even par through one hole. Okay, well, it took you 20 minutes to make even par. Thank. Yeah. Even par through one hole. So hopefully we'll uh, 
hopefully we'll have something really good for uh, Justin Thomas between now and uh, the end of the show. Justin Thomas. Yeah. So uh, the last golfers uh, out. Well, Finau has not posted a score yet. Oh, Finau. Uh, yeah, so Finau might be finito. <laughs> uh, then the last group uh, went out about 13 minutes ago, Morikawa, <laughs> Smith, and Spieth. So everyone is on the golf course. Everyone's having a good old time. Round number one of the Masters. Uh, three players at four under par. Matsuyama, uh, Wade Simpson, or Webb Simpson, I'm Web, sorry. Web. And um, uh, Mark Leishman is four under as well. And he's four under through six holes. That's not bad. That's not too shabby at all. Uh, so those are the three guys that are four under par. Kokrak, five shots back. He is one over through six holes. So there's the Masters first round of the of the tournament in Augusta where uh, um, who's the group that I said Metallica should be uh, playing the music for uh, for the Masters I think that'd be I think that'd be cool as hell you'd give all the the golf fans 70 and over a heart attack <laughs> they're getting ready to watch golf they sit down they relax and they're ready for this sweet piano music and here comes Metallica <gasps> <laughs> Play the the theme that uh, Rivera uses uh, um, when he when he walked out uh, of the uh, of the of the bullpen at Yankee Stadium. Uh, that's that's good stuff right there. That that should be the new uh, the Masters just, uh, theme music. Why don't just give it to LL Cool J and have him make a? Uh, oh no, no, no! You don't want to go that far. No, 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 no. no. You want to go into hip hop? Uh, that would be interesting. It, let let Sandler be in uh, in charge of that stuff, I and mean, then that would be uh, Opera Man would uh, would be cool for uh, for Augusta. <laughs> All right, three three zero eight eight six zero eight one three. I believe that jacket belongs to Mister Gilmore. <laughs> uh, with you till three o'clock on this Thursday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Uh, tonight, 7 o'clock, Fitch taking on Canfield. Oof, it'd be a good one. Fitch and Canfield battle of undefeated teams in the uh, championship round of the uh, tournament uh, that has been going on since Monday. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's only fitting that these two teams will be playing each other. Uh, for this championship. This should be a, a great, great game tonight uh, at Fitch High School. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, and Ty, Ty Bartell and DT are going to have the call. And if you know anything about Ty, uh, this is going to be a fun game because Ty always gets the good games. It's just when it, we call him Big Game Bartell for a reason. There you go. He's always getting the dramatic finishes, so you can expect an extra inning walk-off probably. Hey, a little uh, interesting thing the National Football League has come out with. Uh, the NFL team win percentages during the 16-game era. 16-game season began in 1978 and 2020 uh, concluded the era of the 16 games in the National Football League. Care to, uh, care to guess who has the highest win percentage of the teams in the 16-game era that began in 1978 and concluded in uh, the 2020 what, like campaign? Biggest, what, home, home win percentage? Uh, this would be the, the win percentage from 78 through 2020. Oh, so win percentage is flat-out win percentage. Flat-out win percentage, 1978 through 2020. Who has the highest win percentage in this 16-game era that just concluded? Patriots? They are number two. Oh! They are number two with a 683 win percentage. Uh. I'm sorry, the 603. 603 win percentage. They are number two. There is one team in front of them. <clears throat> I can't tell you where this team is. That would be a dead giveaway. Pittsburgh? Yep. 609 winning percentage for the Steelers. Mm. In the uh, in the 16-game regular season format, 
The Steelers were 413 wins, 265 losses, two ties, a winning percentage of 609, number one in the National Football League. Uh, where did the Cleveland Browns finish? Oh, I don't want to do uh, that would be number 31. Ooh, they're not last. A 399 the, win percentage. The Lions, last? the Lions are dead there it last. Is. 396. Eat your heart out, Jeff Beaches. Yep, the Lions are dead last. Uh, um, 268 wins, 410 oof. losses, and two ties. Now, one of the reasons why the Browns may not have been dead last was the fact that, if you remember, 94. Five, no, 96, 97, and 98, they didn't have a football team. That, and they had eras where they went to the playoffs. Absolutely. And, uh, the, the late 80s uh, and, the, and the early 90s, they were pretty you know, pretty good. 2003 probably helped them, and then the last couple of years probably helped them a little bit too. Yeah. Uh, the Browns were 251, now, 379, uh, and 2. Where are the Chiefs? Uh, the Kansas City Chiefs are a little bit better than what you would think. I'm going to say eight. No, down a little bit. Ten? A little bit more. Thirteen. Uh, up a little bit. Twelve. There you go. All right. <laughs> uh, 359 wins, 319 losses, and two ties. A win percentage of 529. My beloved Bills... I mean, the 90s really helped you. Yeah, the 90s helped us tremendously, but uh, they're still below 500. Oh. Yeah, 334 wins, 300 and f- I'm sorry, 334 wins, 346 losses, a win percentage of 491. So, speaking of win percentages, uh, this coach has a, a pretty, pretty good, good win one. percentage good and uh, will be a really good win percentage in the EOAC, uh, the head softball coach of the Lisbon Blue Devils chiming in, Mr. Anthony. Yep, Dave Crispin, how you doing, Coach? I'm doing great. How are you guys? We're, we're good. We're, we're happy to have you on to talk some softball on our Softball Thursday, and, and you guys are looking very good to start the season, especially in the EOAC with that sweep of United earlier this week. Talk about what that meant to this program. I mean, coming into that series, both teams were undefeated in the conference. It was shaping up to be a competitive one. And you guys put your foot on the gas and, and beat them in two games by a combined score of 36-4. to four. Yeah, the uh, United-Lisbon thing, that goes way back. Um, you know, and gosh, they have good softball out there. Um, you know, our league in general is pretty young this year. Um so whenever you get some returning kids coming back, especially off of a COVID break like that, um, you know, you're you're very thankful. So we had saw, saw what they were doing, but it was a year that we didn't get to play them. So some of these kids uh, weren't even on the field two years ago. So it, it's an eye-opener. And so we went in there um, just knowing that it was going to be a battle. And uh, fortunately, our kids really stepped up. Uh, I felt like we come out of the gate strong. Um, you know, we've got some kids that um, are pretty high caliber players as far as uh, uh, hitting goes. And um, I just felt like the pressure we put on them early kind of affected their young team. But Sam does a real nice job with his group over there. Coach, you made mention of the uh, the COVID year uh, and the lost year for everyone in spring sports. Do you find yourself in a more teachable moment this year than in previous years? Well, unfortunately, yeah, Ron, because uh, we had some kids that normally uh, put a full slate of travel ball in. Um, we wanted, or normally, we go to the Spano Dome in the winter, and we try to do some stuff there. I mean, that's been most every year since I've been here uh, coaching softball, and we just couldn't do that this year. And so, uh, you know, our pitchers, I didn't feel like they got nearly as many reps as they needed to get. It's just been a real learning curve with that but we were just super excited to especially for our four seniors to get back on the field um and do some things uh, this year i think a lot of people are going to be talking about your offense this year and, and we'll talk about it in a little bit but i want to talk about emma thompson in the circle because she came into that united series i mean united scored 39 runs in their first three games and she shut down that eagle offense that whole game on monday uh what, what have you seen from her in the circle so far this year She's doing a great job. She's doing what a senior should do. Uh, 
you know, classic example, last night we played just a probably the best team in the area in softball, uh, talking about Ursuline. And you know what? It was a tough game for us, but she battled through the whole thing. I was so proud of her uh, in doing that. And, uh, you know, going into the United Series, our seniors were were hyped. You know, they knew that uh, not only is it a rival, but, you know, it's a league game. We are the reigning EAC champs, and we want to try to keep hold of that. And she knew going in that uh, that first game of the two-game set was going to be a big one. And uh, I thought she responded really well. Coach, I know uh, yesterday you guys took a, uh, a really large step up, uh, taking on Ursland, and uh, it, it didn't fare f- uh, very well for you folks, but uh, that certainly prepares uh, this softball team for the rest of the season in terms of the, uh, of the caliber of competition you'll see from the EOAC. Yeah, we, uh, we try to schedule up um, with our non-leagues and uh, – you know, we're playing Marlington Saturday, uh, play Springfield tonight. Uh, we have McDonald on the schedule. We actually are going over to Akron playing Cuyahoga Heights and uh, Berkshire. And then we've got another game with uh, Ursland in a couple of weeks. Um, so, you know, we try to view it as a, a learning experience. We want to see the best pitching that we can see. And, um, you know, you're just not going to do that by scheduling down. So we try to schedule up and see what happens. In that game last night, I mean, like you talked about Emma Thompson battling. One of the things I saw, I mean, you can take little things from that game, and one of the best things was I think Julian Utter came up, who's one of the best hitters on, in that Ursuline lineup with runners on base, and Thompson was able to strike her out. Little things like that that you can take and say, hey, you had a, this really good at bat, this really good you know, sequence of pitches. When, when you look at a game like that, is that something you can do as a coach with your, with your, with your players and take a little, uh, little things from a game like that and say, we did this well, we did this well, try to take positives from, from a game that maybe doesn't go the way you want run-wise? For sure. Um, you know, we talked about that in the dugout after the game. Um, you know, going in, you know that it's a huge uh, mountain to climb. But, um, you know, when we looked at those first two innings, um, you know, we jump on the board first. We're thrilled about that. Uh, and then, you know, they piece together – it had to be eight or nine straight hits, and these are legitimate hits. And, you know, she's hitting her spot. So sometimes you got to tip your hat and say, okay. Uh, the only disappointment I really had about last night was uh, the fourth inning where I felt like we threw the ball around seven. They have not went seven innings with anyone. We didn't quite reach that goal. But, um, you know, we are taking these things, and we're going to try to uh, – take those things that we can learn from our bats against quality pitchers like Holland and uh, like you said, piece it together every night and uh, just try to get better each and every day. Cause going into tournament play, we want to be playing our best softball. Coach Anthony and I were talking about the uh, tournaments and, and I'm, I'm hoping uh, that softball is going to take a page from baseball and a page from all the other sports where two districts will combine into one because uh, if and when that happens, oh my goodness, is this going to be a loaded tournament, uh, especially uh, with all the talent that we have softball-wise uh, in this area. Uh, is this going to be a reality, Coach? Do you know? Well, I I get on the uh, OHSA side all the time, and what I'm seeing on there is a uh, super super district of 24 teams, uh, Northeast 1 and 2, very similar to basketball that I saw. And uh, then we're going to have another district that's going to be closer to Cleveland. And uh, out of those 24 teams in the D4, which is where we will be, uh, yeah, there's some really good ones. So um, uh, I kind of like the format. I wasn't sure going into basketball that I would like it. I ended up liking it. I think you have uh, more choices than you did before. And, um, you know, I just think it makes makes the game better. Uh, And it's going to uh, help teams um, you know, probably plot their course a little more so than they would have before. Coach, we got to talk about Justice Frable for a second. I mean, uh, I've seen her hit two home runs already in the two games I've been to. Um, she has the OHSA tied the record in her freshman year for most home runs in a game with four against East Palestine. Uh, what, a, what a hitter, what a family. Talk about what it's like coaching her and, and some of the things that she brings to the team. Yeah, just a 
super family. Uh, known him now for several years. Uh, got the pleasure of uh, coaching Justice's older sister Kennedy, who's playing for YSU now. And uh, just the softball family. You know, they they do those things. They uh, they do the travel ball circuit. They go to the uh, hitting instructors. They do those things, and um, you know they buy in. And Justice is uh, just a phenomenal athlete. Um, I'm just glad, you know, that she has chosen softball as one of her sports because there could be many for her. But, um, yeah, her uh, her approach is awesome. Uh, I think she's a very confident hitter. And then when she gets rolling, you're just uh, you're almost banking on a hit. And uh, just finding the spot that's appropriate for her in the lineup um, is going to be my biggest chore. You know, as eventually as she gets even more comfortable – she gets that stroke down even more so because we're just in game six. She could even drop down into that three spot and really help us RBI-wise. But, uh, yeah, it's a nice weapon I have, no doubt about it. It's really, I mean, interesting putting her up at the one spot. You see that a lot in uh, Division One colleges where they put their best hitter up at number one so teams can't really decide to pitch around them because no one wants to lead off the inning with a walk. Uh, I, I kind of like the, the fact that you've taken one of your better hitters and you put her up in the leadoff spot to set the tone early. And you did it against Ursuline. She hit a leadoff home run. Talk about what went into you know trying to find a spot in her lineup, and how much do you like her in the leadoff spot? Well, I'm starting to really like it. You know, she's probably our uh, fastest kid as well, and you know, a single turns into a double with her. Um, and uh, you know, that's a nice commodity to have. And then I got a our little catcher, Katie Clark. Uh, she does a nice job at the plate as well, and she's also an excellent bunner if we needed that. Maya Emerling's really picking up the slack in the three-hole, you know, as far as an RBI goes in most cases, especially in the United Series. So, And then McKenna Daly uh, kind of covers Maya. So it's really hard to pitch around going through that first four or five. So, um, yeah, I'm liking it as long as we put together consistent at-bats. Um, you know, we always try to teach them to have a plan when you go up there, and especially as a leadoff hitter, you know, that's – that's not an always an easy thing to do. It's kind of a pressure packed spot, but she's adapting really well. Coach, take a, a quick scouting report of the EOAC. Obviously, Columbiana uh, is going to be the public enemy number one for uh, for your program uh, as we uh, as we move forward. Are there any other teams that you're looking at that could be a potential roadblock for uh, for Lisbon this year? Well, you know, in the past, East Palestine has always put a, a really good team on the field, and I know they're young this year. I don't know a ton about them. So, uh, but we try to respect everybody, you know, like a United. Um, Letonia has, uh, you know, they played Columbiana to a 6-2 score, so they've got to be good. And, uh, you know, defensively, and they're doing some things right. Um, I know Southern is uh, down a little bit with numbers, but I know the coach over there, Coach Boyle, does an excellent job. Um, and then, of course, Columbiana. And, you know, I know those girls. I know those athletes. And um, so, yeah, I mean, it's going to be interesting coming down the stretch. Uh, league games are, you know, obviously important when you've got your sights on a league title. So we're just trying to take them a game at a time and get prepared. And every Monday and Tuesday just plan on going to war. So You certainly know the Columbiana girls really well. I'll say that much. <laughs> yeah. um, yes, I do. Let's uh, – Tonight you guys are playing Springfield, and Springfield's a team that's coming off of the split with Middle Ridge. Both exciting games. Their offense is very high caliber. They scored 18 runs in those two games. What kind of things are you expecting tonight for your team to bounce back over the, over the game against Ursuline? Well, that is the key, Anthony, is bounce back. You know, when you're dealing with, uh, you know, high school kids and just their whole mentality, uh, you know, we talk a lot about defending the home field and, uh, you know, trying to get, uh, back on track is going to be key to me. I think we got to get out of the gate. We got to uh, try to flex a little muscle offensively. Um, I'm going to pitch a freshman to start out tonight um, and then see how that goes. But, you know, the other two are always on call. And, uh, yeah, they're a good team. Coach McKinstry does an excellent job, doesn't matter what sport he's coaching. So, you know, his kids are going to be prepared, they're going to be ready, and they're going to be fired up. So, you know, we've had some really uh, – classic games with Springfield in the past. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be exciting. You know, one of my favorite things about Lisbon and uh, that coming from a Letonia grad, uh, I love the, the same small town, uh, uh, just support 
that that the that the village of Lisbon gives its athletic uh, department and and the high school kids, whether it's football, basketball, whatever sport, and it's in any sport, they're always going to be front and center cheering on their Blue Devils. And uh, I would imagine that it's more of the same when when Lisbon's playing a home game. You got lots of people cheering on the Blue Devils in Lisbon. Oh, it's uh, it's phenomenal. Um, we were a little worried with COVID, how that was all going to shake out. But uh, the other night against United, I mean, we had the field circled with uh, lawn chairs. So it was uh, it's fun to see. Our fans are great. The people here in this community have backed our program. But like you said, they back all the programs. So just uh, excellent community to teach and coach in. Um, and, um, you know, we hope we can uh, go out there and perform to the level of their expectations each and every night. We've talked about Emma Thompson, but before we let you go, I want you to, to kind of highlight your other seniors and, and give them their moment to shine, if, if you will, and uh, what they bring to your program and, and how special they've been to coach. Well, this group, uh, Tri-T, you know, I coached them when they were in seventh and eighth grade. We did a couple summer routes with them. I knew they were going to be a special group. They're invested, uh, Emma Thompson, uh, uh, Taylor DeLand, who's our center fielder, um, she also did some pitching for, especially earlier um, in her career. Mallory Gallo is our left fielder, uh, just solid, covers a ton of ground out there. Um, and, of course, Emma Thompson. And uh, then, uh, you know, Katie Clark is a story unto herself. She, uh, she's had two hip surgeries as an 18-year-old, and she's coming off of one, and she's probably in uh, the sixth month of that right now. And we didn't even know if we were going to have Katie. And uh, just a tribute to her and just her whole mentality and approach. Uh, she's going to go to Muskingum and play, and she's just like, yeah, Coach, I want to have my senior year. And I was so excited to know that I was going to have her back because she is, she is just a human wall back there behind the plate. Uh, never, never had in my 26 years a catcher that blocks like that. Uh, I've had some really good catchers, but she is by far the best blocker that I've ever seen. But, uh, yeah, I'm excited for those girls, and it's been uh, – Awesome to have them be part of something that I love and I know that they love as well. We're just hoping the year turns out great for them. Well, Coach, I can't wait to see the two games that you play against Columbiana. So uh, it, we'll look forward to that and, and just look forward to seeing uh, the success of this program. And, and hopefully uh, Lisbon's playing some great, great softball going into the brand-new, ever-expanded tournament, which will be – straight crazy uh like all these tournaments have been uh, since the change uh provided by the OHSAA. Congratulations on on a really good start to this point and and best of luck to you throughout the campaign, sir. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me on and go blue. There you go. go all right, there is the uh, head softball coach of the Lisbon Blue Devils. Their their blue is a little bit lighter than the blue that is worn by the I, I got the color, you know. I'm, yeah, you, I'm rocking it. Yeah, you you have the uh, you have the Lisbon blue on that hat. There you go. That's uh the Latonia blue is more of a navy it's blue navy. where navy. the Lisbon blue is more of a Dodger blue. Royal. Royal blue, Dodger blue. Royal. Yeah. Oh, Come on. Okay. Royal blue. Royal blue. Royal royal blue. Yeah. Okay. Uh, while that interview was going on, Jason Kokrak's game went to hell. <laughs> uh, well, not too badly. Uh, he's two over. He he uh, bogeyed the seventh hole. Uh, so he's now on the par five eighth. Might be able to get a stroke back. Who knows? Uh, but he is currently two over in the first round of the Masters, which right now... Uh, Matsuyama, Simpson, and Leishman are all four under par. Uh, three-way tie for first place in the uh, first round of the Masters. Patrick Reed, uh, Brian Tolnar's selection to win the tournament, is two under. He is currently tied for fifth place. Justin Thomas, who is uh, my selection along with, um, uh, along with uh, Anthony's selection, to win the tournament, uh, he's plus one. He uh, bogeyed the second hole. We're good. Plenty of holes. Yeah, he bogeyed the second hole, unfortunately. Plenty of holes. Plenty so, of holes. Uh, he's tied for 36th, currently five shots off the pace. So 
We'll see what happens. All right, we'll take a timeout, be back with more. It is a Thursday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. New things happen all day. Some are good, some not so good. In today's complicated world, while you're busy working, playing, and living life, we're busy helping you make sense of the day's news. And there's only one place where it comes together with clarity, context, and accountability. It's 21 News at 6 with me, Madison Tromler, and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 6. It's what the day's news really means to you. Welcome home to a home made homier with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring, and, well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily, delivered conveniently, enjoyed comfortably. BairdBrothers.com. WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists, located on South Avenue in Boardman. Hi, this is Jim Myers with Myers Family Insurance, your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's, Let's win, win together. together. Call K-Squared Marketing at 330-623-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. The 4M company, being an architect and construction manager for over 40 years, has had the opportunity to use many different electrical businesses for our projects. The depth, quality, and knowledge and attention to detail displayed by Dickey Electric makes them stand out above all the rest. For state-of-the-art expertise and a timeless commitment to our customers, contact Joe Dickey Electric. We are everything electrical. At Hubbard Chevrolet, Hubbard can help you get the financing you need regardless of your situation. I'm Tony Pache, and I've helped thousands of customers in Northeast Ohio and Western Pennsylvania buy a vehicle. Bad credit, no credit, no problem. I can get you approved for a low interest loan and maybe even a low payment lease on a new car the number one Chevy dealership in Trumbull County for three years in a row. Visit HubbardChevy.com to get pre-approved or come see me, Tony Page, to get a new vehicle today. Remember folks, Hubbard can help. News doesn't stop after the sun goes down. Sometimes you just have to hustle to get it. At 21 News, no matter how far it is, no matter what it takes to get there, we're working to bring you the best stories and the freshest content at 11 p.m with the context and clarity that makes it worth staying up for, no matter what time it is. 21 News at 11 with me, Aaron Simonek and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 11, news that's worth your time. When looking for home design inspiration, don't just be inspired, be Baird inspired. Whether new or remodeling, Baird Brothers has the latest trends like shiplap to refresh your home. Go from inspiration to installation with our wide selection of in-stock American hardwoods. 
from the rustic charm of antique oak to the warmth of traditional cherry, Baird Brothers has what you need to make your home inspiring. Baird Brothers, our family's heritage, your family's home. Welcome back to a Thursday edition of Running Points presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. Ron Pochesta with you alongside Anthony Hartwig. Uh, before we uh, uh, go any further, I uh, did want to uh, congratulate Dominic Bucko from uh, YSU. Uh, he is the um, Nike Horizon League Baseball Player of the Week co-player of the week, along with uh, Christian Lopez from UIC. So uh, congratulations to Dominic Bucko. Boy, he was ridiculously on, hot they, over they the week. Did just announce that? Uh, it, it, was, it was announced a day or so okay, ago. Okay, I was about to feel like yeah, that. so that's kind of late for a, a player of the week announcement. Yeah, I gotta, I, we, uh, we had to clean up that, uh, that little thing that I, I didn't even recognize it. Ron Seconds is the YSN janitorial service. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Penguins off to their best start in 16 years. They've won nine of their last 11 games. And now they got Milwaukee. Yeah, and and they're going to be playing on the road for the first time in a while. So, uh, fingers crossed, they uh, they take care of business against Milwaukee. They just want a better road trip than they had last time. Boy, no kidding. Uh, you can it, it, obviously you want to split on at home and uh, you know win the majority of your game or split on the road, win the majority of your games at home. And you're in uh, pretty good shape. And this, it, it, for this week, I don't want to split. Give me three out, of, at least three out of four. Let's keep the good times rolling here because the Penguins have won three straight series. Let's make it four in a row here. Let's go uh, three out of four, bare minimum against Milwaukee. You and, talked to Coach Bertolini on Tuesday about this matchup. Yep. I mean, yeah, Milwaukee will swing it. They uh, they they've got some uh, they've got some serious bats. Uh, so this will be uh, this will be a test for the pitching staff the for sure. Penguins have some serious arms, so yeah, this, this strength this, on strength. This will be a very interesting, uh, very very interesting series. Uh, by the way, mm-hmm. going back to um, uh, uh, Bucko, Dominic Bucko, he hit six fifteen with a slugging percentage of thirteen oh eight, two homers, a double, a triple, amongst eight hits and thirteen at bats. This past weekend, six for eight in the doubleheader. Crazy good numbers for Dominic Bucko. That, that's solid right there. Absolutely solid. Uh, so, uh, it, you know, Penguins are, Penguins are playing good baseball. And we'll, uh, we'll see if that trend continues when they go into Milwaukee to take on the Panthers this weekend. Let's run down the uh, games on the network tonight, as we always do at the end of the show. Three softball games on the network as we have Struthers hosting JFK. The school will be taking care of that. They do a wonderful job for us. East Palestine hosting JCC. DJ will be over there with that call uh, from the park where East Palestine plays. The name of it is escaping me. Uh, And then I'll be in Crestview as they are hosting Gerard. It was originally scheduled to be Middle Ridge, but Middle Ridge has to make up a league game tonight, so Crestview had to replace that. Uh, opponent with Gerard. So, Crestview hosting Gerard tonight. I'll be there with that call. Hey, hang on a second. Before we go into the baseball games, have you broadcast a game from Crestview? I broadcasted a game there for a little, like a summer 12U tournament. I've never broadcasted a high school game. It gets dark there pretty quickly. (laughs) That is a really nice complex, but my only... I don't want to say gripe because I don't I don't think that's a right word, but if it's a cloudy day in Crestview, if the sun is not out, man, does it get dark there quickly. I don't know if it's a country it's thing so or what. It's so far away from the school too. The field is that yeah. you don't get a lot of the natural lighting either. Yeah, it is. It it gets crazy dark there if it's not sunny. If it's a cloudy day, it gets dark there in a hurry. Baseball, we obviously have the marquee game. Fitch hosting Canfield at 7 o'clock. Ty Bartell will have that call, and DJ will scoot down there after his softball game to join him. Um, Want to reach out that Boardman hosting LeBray is canceled, and uh, West Branch for, was originally uh, scheduled to play Southeast, but they played that at an earlier date. So if you're looking at your schedule and you see West Branch versus Southeast, that game has already been played. Uh, on the network, Ursuline is going to be 
playing Hubbard at scene one. Billy Mack will have the call there. And also, Lowville is going to be playing East on scene two. And we'll have that one as well. All right, so three baseball games, three softball games, all on the network. Um, everything except that Fitch game starting at 5. Fitch will be a first pitch at 7 o'clock. Yeah, and obviously Fitch is turf all the way around with lights. So uh, and even if it rains, which it's not supposed to, and we'll knock on wood and say it's not going to, uh, but if it were to rain, uh, you would still be in pretty good shape because it's a turf field. Uh, the only way it gets canceled or slowed down is if it's lightning. Yeah, that or if it's just a downpour. They're not going to play in a monsoon. But that's not in the forecast. And the good thing is that YSN's up in a press box. So even if it does sprinkle or start to rain a little bit, unlike most cases where we'd have to scoot immediately at any side of rain. Yes. Uh, we're undercover, so we'll be okay to keep broadcasting. Hey, before we go to break, uh, bottom of the fourth inning, Pirates are uh, playing. The uh, the Indians are off today. The Pirates are playing. They're at home. It's their home opener against the Chicago Cubs. Uh, and right now the Cubbies lead the Pirates one to nothing going into the bottom half of inning number four, uh, getting the starts for the Buckos in the home opener uh, is the very young uh, Tyler Anderson, uh, the uh, left-hander, uh, is uh, is getting the start for the uh, Pirates, and actually he's thirty one. He's not too young. Uh, but uh, Tyler Anderson getting the start, giving up a run in the uh, top half of inning number one. That would be the solo home run hit by Chris Bryant, uh, who is two for two with a double and a home run, so he's halfway to the side. Other than that, Anderson's pitching a good game. Yeah, he's given up uh, three. Uh, I'm sorry, six hits in four innings of work. Two of the six hits given up to. Uh, uh, Chris Bryant, who, like I said, he has doubled. He has homered uh, halfway to the cycle. Uh, Pirates batting in the bottom of the fourth inning, down one to nothing to the uh, Chicago you Cubs. Know, speaking of the cycle, we, we talked to Dave Chrisman earlier, and we talked about Justice Rabel. In that game against United on Monday, she was a triple away from the cycle. She hit a ball towards the gap in the like seventh inning when the Devils were up 24 to 2 or whatever. And it was actually run down and caught. And people were thinking, like, I, I talked to Lisbon fans last night. They go, man, if that girl didn't get to that ball, it was in the gap, and it might have been a triple. So she was dangerously close to a cycle. Yeah, and, and hitting for the cycle, that's, you don't see that very often. No, not even in softball. Yeah, definitely not. All right, we'll take a final time. I'll be back to put a wrap-up on this one. Thursday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Your first and last stop with your tax return should be with me, Tracy Bryden at Greenwood Chevrolet in Austin Town. No other dealer goes the extra mile to bring you the largest selection of vehicles at one convenient location. With guaranteed credit approval, I will find you the right vehicle and the right financing options for you. I am ready to go the extra mile to show you why no other dealer sells more cars finances more and gets you more for your refund than Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. Your teams work hard and give it all they've got. Well, so does ours. Because 21 Sports and YSN give you extra effort when covering local sports. 21 Sports and YSN, winning coverage of our Valley's teams. No matter what the weather, be prepared with a reliable, efficient, rude gas furnace or air conditioner from MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Call your energy efficient expert, MP Vivo, today for a free estimate. Here at MP Vivo, we rely on rude, and so should you. Myers Family Insurance knows the importance of a great team. 
Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. It's storm season. I think we're under the gun for some heavy storms over the next couple of hours. And Storm Tracker 21 is ready. This is probably the one we're keeping a closer eye on. On air. And locally, we're going to have a lot of eyes on our area. Online. All right, let's talk high risk future cast and the timing of this weather. On social media and on our app. Notice we'll have scattered showers on Thursday. Stay ready with Storm Tracker 21. A severe weather threat now through around sunset. Your first and last stop with your tax return should be with me, Tracy Bryden at Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. No other dealer sells more cars, finances more, and gets you more for your refund than Greenwood Chevrolet in Austintown. WRS Wealth Advisors is the area's premier wealth and retirement specialist. With our combined 70 years experience and comprehensive wealth strategy, we assist our clients attain their goals. Call 330-965-0370 to learn more about our individual and corporate financial planning services or visit wrswealthadvisors.com. Good luck, athletes. Hi, everyone. This is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live at no cost to you by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. Ah, the details. Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is one fine ride. Perfect cornering, superb handling, sporty and stylish, power to spare, plus awesome mileage. Yeah, jaw-droppingly beautiful lines and well-appointed with luxurious trim. Put more oomph in your life and start beholding the molding. Find your home's fine hardwood at BairdBrothers.com. For heating, cooling, and indoor air quality, the Mahoney Valley Trust MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy-efficient experts. Planning a project around your home or rental property? Trust the electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Joe Dickey Electric is your local go-to source for responsive, reliable residential electrical work. From everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and safety inspections, no job is too big or too small. Call Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com. Welcome back as we close up shop on this Thursday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. Looking forward to tonight's game in Austintown between Canfield and Austintown in boys baseball. This should be fun. It should be fun. And, uh, you know, we, we, we've talked about it at the Wazoo. I mean, Canfield has been pitching so well, you know, one through three uh, as far as their starters go. Austin Town Fitch also ran right through this tournament to get to this point without having much of a problem. So two really strong teams are about to collide for a first of three meetings, which is just a treat for baseball fans. Should be a great, great time. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Power Hour is coming up next. We will talk tomorrow on a Friday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town.